Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is now episode 366. In this episode, we will rank the top 10 teams in the NFL post-free agency, talk about the luxurious knee trade, the Titans AFC South chances, give our Mount Rushmore for most influential NBA players, and more this now episode 366. How are we doing, fellas? Uh, I don't know. I've had a rough, let's say, a little under 24 hours, to be completely honest with you. I've had some car problems. I was trying to teach my brother, River Brown, over here how to drive. And let me say, let's give some credit to River Brown. He knows how to drive. Uh, not as bad of a driver as he likes to lead on. Yes, give, give him a round of applause for that. Absolutely deserved. Uh, however, we're, we're, let's say, 20 minutes in to, to driving, we're riding around the city. Point. Now, he was, he was definitely cooking with some gas. We get to a light, and... He hits the brake, and it starts to screech, like an obnoxious noise. And I noticed it, and I say something, and I was like, man, brake, I don't know why the brake sounded like that. Then the car to the right of me starts screaming at the car, screaming at us. So I lower the window, and he's like, your car's on fire. Get out of the car. <laughs> so I was like, okay, whatever. I'm going to listen to this guy. That's not, that's not some shit you play around with. Did, could you not see the car on fire? I, or not smoking? really. Not really. A it it just smoke. smelled It yeah. smelled funny more than anything. So I was like, all right, bro, put it in park, turn the car off, put the hazards on, let's hop out. So we hop out, call Pops, cop pulls up, he comes He comes in, uh, does his job, calls the fire department, the fire chief ends up coming over, they take the battery out, all this, that, and the third, then today I had to, to figure that out, but... Everything's okay. Car's fine. Car's doing okay. Can can teach Riv how to drive again. But moral of the story is Riv kind of fucked up my car. <laughs> so know. you had to replace your battery? No, a dude. I don't know what it was. The just the car started to smoke. We turned it off. It stopped smoking. They took the battery out just to be safe, just to make sure that the car wasn't running in any type of way. But really, I don't know what the problem was. Today we looked at it. My father in law, he's a mechanic, and he's looking at it. Firestone said three thousand dollars to fix the car. He looked at it. He said, this is bullshit. There's nothing wrong with your car. Maybe outside of the fact that your your battery has some corrosion. So he goes and he, he does what he has to do. He looks at it. We run the car. We, we put give it some gas. Doesn't really smell anything crazy. It's not too hot. So I don't know what the hell could have been going wrong. The only thing, and this is legitimately the only thing I could think of. When you first got into the car, mm -hmm. when I said you hit the brake, you hit the gas. And when you hit the gas, you let it run, you you really rev the gas while it was in park. Mm. I wonder if that is what overheated the car, because other than that, the gear was fine. He didn't shift. He didn't. You know, you do like the paddle shifters accidentally. Didn't do any of that. There's no reason for anything to, like that to have happened. You said this happened at a light. Yeah, we were we were breaking into a stoplight. Correct. So that means. Rev wouldn't have been able to rev the engine unless the car was. Parked. This was as soon as we started. Okay. So when we he first just started, on the gas. he was just on the gas. <laughs> That's the only. I'm telling you, the only thing I could think of because he was driving fine. It wasn't like he was like on and off the gas, on and off the gas. Not really. So the fact that that happened really was annoying. But what were your I, thoughts, Rev? <laughs> um, I was pretty nervous. I think the only thing like when he was teaching me, so like at first we was at Stye Park. We was in a little circle. I was getting a little nervous because it's dark out. He's teaching me in the dark, so it's mad dark That's out. That's how you learn. And, you know, I was doing good. So he at first he was, you know, like, yeah, just do the turns. Do the turns. And I'm chilling. Next thing you know, he's like, all right, let's go on the street. So I was like, what? What you like, what you mean? He was like, just, just make the right, go on the street. Trust me. So I was like, all right, make the right. Now I'm seeing cars. So I'm getting a little nervous, you know. It's like, all right, let's see. But I'm cool. I think the only thing that bothers me with driving I don't have any real comfortability like where my feet are, like mm -hmm. with uh, the gas pedal and the brakes. Like I don't have no real comfortability, so I'm constantly shifting, mm -hmm. moving my feet here and there, foot off the brake, stuff like that. So that's really my only problem. But like left turns, I was really good at left turns. It was great, right? So I was working on it, but I, I was getting better as I went. Um, stopping at the uh, gas uh, at the light, I was good at that. Stopping at stop signs, you know, hitting the left, hitting the right turn. Like I, so I was, I was doing good. It's just the comfortability down there is what I was. Your really test is Thursday, with. right? Yeah. There we go. We still have time to drive. Uh, there was only one time I was scared. Uh, I told Riv, you have to stay near that double yellow. That's where you want to live because the cars to the left of you aren't going to get near you. They're just going to see that you're on the double yellow. That's all you can, you're responsible for. There was one time he was a little bit too right. We almost violated a car. <laughs> I kept it quiet. Riv doesn't even know that this almost happened. But I saw it, and I was just like, if I say something, it's going to freak like him out. Side God forbid. Yes. Mm. 
He definitely didn't careful. say that because I don't even remember what he's talking about. So I saw what it is, happen internally. I just said, all right, Drew, just process this and, and, and hope he doesn't body the car. <laughs> what is <laughs> your functionality when it comes to how what foot you're going to hit on the gas or the brake? So I guess it's more like how much pressure do I put on the buttons? Mm-hmm. It's like so each I ha- car is different too. Yeah, like, so I have my left foot on the on the brake and I have my right foot on the you know the gas. And it's so just, you have your two feet like this at all times. Yeah, like, you dr- okay. you drive with one foot. You don't have to. I drive with two feet. That's how you drive. Yeah, I don't. Oh. I don't keep my my foot is never just sitting on the brake, but I use my right. But for See, the that's gas, the thing. I, I moved my left was, over, when but I it was uncomfortable. My left. But I was scared I feel uncomfortable to like using take my it right. Off, you know? The way I'm most comfortable with my, really yeah. my left foot is just how it is when I'm sitting down, and then my right foot is the one that I interchange between okay. hitting on the gas and hitting on the brake. So that's probably like a comfortability yeah. thing because I, I did not want to take my yeah. left foot off the. So I don't keep brake. like so like yeah my well, you right did, you foot. Should, you should just hover over the brake yeah. though. It's dangerous, nah, my brother. I was on it. Like I I wouldn't press it, but my foot is on that button at all times just to make sure. I'll be honest. I, when I kind of drive and I'm cruising, majority of the time, my foot's off the pedal. Like, both of them. It's just off the pedal, just letting the car roll. You give it enough gas for it to go, and you chill. When you brake, you're, you're ready to go. Driving with two feet, Joel, I'm stunned to hear you're you say this. You're tall shit, I'll be honest. Tall shit? Well, that's, that's, that's because with... he's so tall that his <laughs> fucking legs are already on the shit. <laughs> I mean, bro, my legs, I'm not Joel tall, but I can definitely use two two feet to drive if I want to. It's just, you don't do that. I don't know. No one ever taught me. It just when I ever got in the car, it's just what I did. That'll probably reduce your anxiety a little bit if uh, you should you drive, just drive one foot with one foot. Yeah, instead of keeping. I wish your I would have known that. On the, no, on the I, like I, if you didn't notice, I kept like like I was kept get, I, I was really uptight, so uh-huh. I kept like shifting my foot. It was being because I didn't know. Like I told you, I didn't know where to be comfortable at with my feet, and then I have to put my seat up. Like I know I'm, I'm not short or nothing, but like. Bro, my seat is up. Like, I, I just got to be up. Yes. Like, I, I just got to be, bro. Like, I just be on edge because, like, I see cars and I'm like, nah, nah I got to boo. But Drew helped me because he was just like, bro, don't worry about the next car. Don't worry about the car behind. So once he said that, I was kind of like, that's when I got comfortable. And I'm like, all right, I feel like I could do this now. So now I'm just cruising. But, yeah, nah, I'll figure it out eventually. I'm locked You think up. Um, next time you guys go, maybe go on the highway? I think I could do it. I I um, I don't driving. know if we're there yet. <laughs> Not that you can't. <laughs> I think say, I can do we it. got a parallel park first. We got yeah, a K yeah. turn. It's like you don't need to levels, get on the highway levels, yeah. to to pass your driver's test. I'm gonna throw you to the wolves. Five p.m. Right. rush hour. I think I think I <laughs> do better 17. on the highway. Honestly, me kind of throwing him to the wolves yesterday. See, honestly, the highway is gonna be easier than fucking around here at five o'clock, bro. Okay. Honestly, yeah. me throwing him to the wolves yesterday was just saying let's go onto the road. Yeah, that yeah. was just I like mean, we did we did like six seven laps. Get on the road at some point. And yeah. I said, all right, bro, let's I'm 25. go. Twenty five. There's only yeah. so many yeah. laps you can do. Just, just take like, off the training wheels. Like, like you, lock in. you do need to pass your driving test, but what's more important is that you can actually drive. For sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, the test is one thing, but you're gonna eventually have to get on the highway. You're gonna have to do these things. Once you do it once, so you're straight. Yeah. Someday. You're gonna have to multitask. Look at your GPS. You That's know, the shit that go. was really fucking me. He was like, yeah, uh, you got to get here, hit the button. Look left, right, left. I'm just like, damn, all this shit I got to do, man. I, I got to get a muscle memory for this. <laughs> yeah, the signal, you got to keep that on on as like one of the main focuses, especially in your driving test. It does not matter if it's like a slight right, a slight left. You always put that turn signal on. Because there was one time I was making like a curve. And mm. she's like, you don't need to put the turn signal on to make a curve like that. I was like, ah, I'd just rather be safe than sorry. And that's it. She didn't say anything else like that because obviously they know what's up, but you still got to do what is best for you to pass this test. So I think you should be all right though. Once actually, I feel like I'll be more confident in that once we K turn in parallel park. Okay. Taking a break from the conversation to talk to you guys about prize picks. Prize picks is a proud sponsor of the pick Side podcast and fellas, this NFL season, there's already some plays and squares on the app. Talk to me. And I'm looking at the running backs because a lot of running back movement, this free agency oh, yeah. period. Tony Pollard, 780 and a half yards, more or less with the Tennessee Titans. Rushing, I'm assuming? Rushing. Okay, not scrimmage, because if it was scrimmage, that'd be absolutely all day. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay, I don't, what's, what's I don't that? know. 781. Mm. How much did he have last year? Did he touch a cap total there. last year? I don't think he, he touched. He probably him. barely did. But Tajay Spears is there. You guys know I'm a big fan of Tajay Spears. There's right, a thousand and five. He's had a thousand year. two years in a row. Uh, one was on 193 attempts. The other was last season 252. I'm gonna say yeah. This is this is a more for for me as well. I think he'll he'll have they more. They definitely than that. had a nice little off season. Picked up a couple guys for the offensive line. 
Hmm. The offensive line should be a lot better than it was last season. I'll go more. I'll, I'll go more. I'm shocked. As big of a fan I am of What's Tony Pollard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I shouldn't think about it, right? <laughs> the Titans offensive line versus what the Cowboys was last season. Their passing attack and their passing game versus what the Cowboys was last season. Uh, I feel like Tajay Spears might take over that backfield. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Tony Pollard, but it does feel like he might have peaked a little bit too early in his career, and now is kind of the downward trend of it. I think Tajay Spears is a baller. The way he can handle contact, his elusiveness. I think Pollard more so will be used for passing down situations. He's a better pass catcher than Tajay Spears. So I'm going to go less here. The next running back we got is Josh Jacobs, mm. a thousand with the Green Bay Packers, more thousand, or less. Thousand flat. Nine hundred ninety nine and a half. Oof. I like that. I know where I'm going, man. <laughs> <laughs> if angry. he stays healthy, he should be able to accomplish this. But if I'm not mistaken, he missed time last year. He did not eclipse this last season. I know the year before that he was the league's he gets a ton leading of rusher. He does yeah, he, get it. He definitely into. will. They yeah, brought he, back he A.J. Was, Dillon. He was at 805 last year on 233 attempts. The year before that, 340, 1653. If he stays healthy, he has a good chance to hit this. He gets the 300 attempts. He'll get the 1,000. 300 attempts, though. Say a That's prayer. A shit ton. Last year, he played 13 games. Yeah. So I mean, he's going to be the workhorse 13 there. 13 games? I think he can hit 1,000 in 13 games in Green Bay. I think with Green Bay and what they have going on, that offensive line, I feel like he could hit it. I, I'm going to go with more here with Josh Jacobs. I think he's going to have a big time more. season. If I'm not Packers. mistaken, he's healthier than Aaron Jones. Yes. He yeah. has been f- for the last few years. I'll say. Mm. And he was 2022 Russian champion. He's had 1,000 three of the five years of his career. I don't take those chances. This All is right, just I'll barely cracking 1,000. Yeah, that's true. And the last two running backs, we got Saquon Barkley at 1,055 and a half with More. the Philadelphia More. Eagles. Hammer it. It's not going to be a question. <laughs> Hammer, it. Hammer it. God willing, he stays healthy. This is, this is a game. I'll game-y. be honest, he can eclipse this in like 12. 1,055? Yeah. Miles Sanders, DeAndre Swift. Come on. They both Let's went more. Uh, unless healthy. the impact of Jason Kelsey is bigger than we think. Because that's a huge possibility. Uh, Saquon was eating over there in New York with a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> he was. Got a great lane, point. baby. I thought you should go over under. And the last running back <laughs> is Derrick Henry with the Baltimore Ravens, 999 and a half. What are we doing? These these uh, plays do seem kind of lowish. It's right? early. It's early. It's they could the all change king. late in the year, you know. No, this is. More. Yeah, he's going to have more than that total, most definitely. He's playing with Lamar Jackson. I'm going to go more as well. And now it's presented by Prize Picks. You can find these plays within the Prize Picks app, download it in the App Store, and use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Now, getting back onto the show, fellas, the first topic of the show ranking top 10 teams after NFL free agency. It's going to be a wild off season. We're just getting started. The draft hasn't even happened yet. Mm-hmm. I think after the draft happens is where the predictions will come We got to do another mock soon. We do. We're running out of time. With trades. With trades. I'm ready. So now that the Chiefs lost to Jerry Sneed, are they out of the top spot? No. Not uh, for me. Yeah, they're not for me either. Not for me. Unfortunately, I would not be fooled and tricked again. They're still one. <laughs> All right. They are also one for me, too. I was just wondering where you guys' heads were. Are we were starting at, at one? Well, he already started. Well, I mean, the Chiefs were one, so I figured they were going to be our consensus. Yeah, he could have, he could have said the Niners. Nah, were nah. Shocked. I think we all knew. I think we all knew. So that's why I figured, hey, someone going to be swayed by Legarius not being on the Chiefs. If you guys aren't, let's start at ten. I could go either way. I could go one at ten. Yeah, ten I know. One. All right. So then let's just ixnay this right now. I'll start number ten. Uh, unfortunately, my Ramley did not crack the spot once the retirement of Aaron Donald was made official. Heartbreaking stuff. Uh, number ten. Green Bay Packers. Uh, they obviously wow. were, were able to figure things out. <laughs> you know it's wa- starting already. <laughs> you know it's you know it's wow. gonna be crazy. He's saying wow to this. Wait till he hears another team. That Are we I doing have. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10? Yeah, I'm assuming. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, the the Green Bay Packers offense last year was able to figure it out. Uh, and this also towards the end of the season, this was also with Christian Watson missing a, a good portion of the games. And and I still believe that Christian Watson is a very firm talent. But I say his name mostly because you put him in a group with Jaden Reed, who showed who, who showed that he can play efficient football. Joel's boy, of course, Dontavian Wicks, the highest graded receiver amongst the the wide receivers that they do have, and Romeo Dobbs. So I, I look at this group of guys. You add Josh Jacobs now. 
uh, obviously a solid offensive line in the front. And then the defense. You go and you add Xavier McKinney, arguably the best. What are we doing over here? Nothing. He's being the creep. He was just looking at me. I just put my thumbs I up. Woke, I looked up. You were looking at me. You know what's crazy, Might bro? Be before the show started, I, there was something going on between you two that was kind of just making me a little there, uneasy. It feels like Riv has some sort of tension he needs to get off on I am, me. But I, I, really don't know, I don't know. I'm if waiting I, for I him to bring you. it up to me. If I expose you. Was it the all fours thing? Just be honest. Yes. What's wrong with being on all fours? Brother man. My God. He's nuts. It's supposed to be a top 10. Uh, you know, I noticed that Dontavian Wicks looks a lot like Garrett Wilson. Low key. Very low key. Aura? You think oh. he got go aura? Um, I wouldn't say that, but Wicks they do look like brothers. They, got do. Aura. they do. They very do. Much Dontavian like is a cool ass name. It is a cool name. Yeah. Very hood. Superstar <laughs> level wide receiver. Where are he from? <laughs> uh, let me check. Uh, he is from. That's one of those that you hear a name. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sounds like the trenches. Uh, it's one of those names that you hear and Baton just like he's, he's destined to be a star, Joel. That's going to be something. USA Today, there's an article they published. PFF, That's going to be something it's insane. PFF names wide receiver Dontavian Wicks as Packers' secret superstar. Mm, they yeah. on to something. PFF is on to yeah, some shit. Yeah, yeah. They know ball. Uh, but yeah, at, at number 10, we'll, we'll keep it easy. We'll keep it uh, We'll keep it light. Credit to the Green Bay Packers and what they're able to accomplish. And and Jordan Love should be set in a position to be successful yet again in year two full time. I'm, so I'm assuming yeah. you have the Packers a bit higher. I'm so curious. Yeah, for you I, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me lower the brightness. Wait, wait, wait. A so, wait, computer. me having them 10 is rude? No, 10 is the way he made it. I don't is think it's I'm interested in the drama. Low? 10 is low. <laughs> I, don't think it's, I don't think it's rude. 10 is low. Because I, so I don't have, so you have that. T- the Eagles at 10. Huh? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah let's give her 10. I'm going to give him my 10 when I give him um, my 10. A lot of honorable mentions. I think a, a few lot, teams right? a few teams deserve <sighs> it. Um, these teams just missed out. I wanted to get the Falcons in here. Couldn't get the Falcons, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Wanted to get the Dolphins in here. Unfortunately, we got the, the Dolphins fuck? in here. Um, and Drew's honorable seen. mention. Or excuse me, I have two more. The Rams and the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, those are they didn't even, four teams I even that, that. I, I was thinking that Especially last year for most of these teams would have happened in there, um, but not these this season. At 10, I have the Houston Texans. Uh, year two, C.J. Stroud. This is a team that just won the division last season. Um, I believe in the 10? coaching staff. I believe in the defense. I don't think 10 is disrespectful when you look at the rest of the, the nine teams in front of them. Um, C.J. We'll, Stroud we'll is a superstar. Uh, yes. This is a really good team. They should I be, must have them egregiously high. They should be in competition to win the, win the division, if not be the favorites to win the division. Um, but I don't see them as like this... They're so much greater than you know the Colts or the Jaguars. I'm expecting them to so win, much but, greater, but I don't think there's a huge gap between them and uh, some other teams in the AFC. You know, I, I I know that whenever we give a team name and you we don't agree with the, the spot, huh? It's not me. Joel's shaking his legs. Joel. Joel. Sorry, it is my leg. Uh, I I know whenever we give a team, we some of us are very surprised and we want to talk about it further. So I think just to speed up the process. Let's just go. You guys already gave your 10. So 10, 10. I'm going to give my 10. And Riz is going to give his 10. And then we'll talk about it. Oh, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8, 8, 8, 8. And then we can stop there. And then see if we got any discrepancies. Okay. So uh, number 10 for me is the Cincinnati Bengals. I have them number 10. Oh, I'm sorry. Number 10 for me is the Green Bay Packers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What's your nine? Uh, number 9, Philadelphia Eagles. I have the Jets at 9. I have the New York Jets at 9, too. I have the Browns at 9. Okay. The Browns were another team that... Uh, you didn't say them in your okay. uh, I honorable mention. I meant to. They were actually, you know they were my number nine, and I switched them. I forgot to put them on. You know mention. what? That's growth for apologizing. Because you wouldn't apologize. For, oh, you know, thank I you, respect that, Appreciate that. Growth. Number eight, Miami Dolphins. I have the Packers at eight. Number eight for me is the Philadelphia Eagles. Number eight is New York Jets. Okay. Okay. Uh, if, so, if so you want to keep going, we can keep going until six. Until all right, I'm okay. Cool. Just, get the a, just get the top five out the way, then we'll do the next five. That's true. All right, number seven, Buffalo Bills. Seven, this is where I have the Bengals. Number seven, I got the Bills here. Seven, Bengals. All right, number six, New York Jets. Wow. Respect. I have the Ravens at six. Number six, whoa, they dropped a lot. Uh, Who do you have? Number I have six. the Ravens at six. Oh, shit. Okay. Number six for me, I got the Houston Texans here. Okay. I well, also have the Houston Texans at six. No shocker, though. That's fine. Um, let's talk about this real quick. Um, I'm the highest on the Jets here. You are. I'm a little shocked by that. I thought that I was going to have them a little bit lower than at least one of you guys. I say that with the idea that we look at this defense, obviously an elite unit. There's really not a position on the defensive side of the ball that you worry about with the Jets. You do lose Bryce Huff, but obviously you guys have been preparing for this. You guys have depth at the defensive line. It seems like there's a decent chance we get clowning. And then on the offensive side, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams. Obviously there are injury concerns with Mike, but... 
like Joel has consistently said, he may be play. He will play through an injury, but you can rely on him to be on the field at the minimum. Of course, outside of last year where he just had a season-ending injury. And then you go and you revamp the offensive line. You trade for a right tackle. You go and you sign the best left tackle available in free agency. AVT, God willing, will be healthy and ready to go off rip. I, I mean... Brees Hall being arguably a top five running back in the National Football League. And Aaron Rodgers is back. I mean, there's really no position that you overly worry about with the New York Jets. I feel like I can just have confidence other than the fact of history has shown us, even when it may be as great as a situation as it gets, the Jets just unfortunately have some terrible luck. Just looking at it objectively right now compared to the other teams in your guys' division, I think I trust the roster construction the most of the New York Jets. I, I think that's fair. The issue I have, or it's not really an issue, it's just we're going into this season and the two biggest question marks are the two question marks I don't want to have for any team. That's quarterback and offensive play caller. And I know we've discussed this in the past True. that Aaron Rodgers is basically the play caller. He's basically the offensive coordinator. So if you want to kind of that alleviate some of the pressure on Nathaniel Hackett, I do think that's fair. But... Just to stay consistent, for a reason why I didn't have the Falcons on this, you do have an aging quarterback coming off an Achilles injury. Even if Rodgers is 80% of himself, I I still think this is a team that can be a dark horse in the AFC. This is a team that I think can make a deep playoff run. But still, this is a a quarterback who, um, of course, hasn't played for a full season. It's still a bunch, especially offensively, a lot of young guys. And a coaching staff that... I, I think Salah's a great defensive mind, but a coach stuff that really hasn't proven itself. So that's why I would have those eight teams above them, especially the the AFC teams. Like, the Bengals have been to Super Bowl. The Ravens have just the one seed. Uh, shocker, the Bills and Chiefs are in this team too, or in this tier two. They have top two quarterbacks in the league. So when I look at those other AFC teams, that's kind of the tier break for me, even though the Jets probably do have roster-wise, top to bottom, better roster. Man, um... I can't trust the Jets. It's really as simple as that. Yeah, I can't trust. You've been the burned Jets. one too many times. Last year, you come into the season saying, "If everything goes right," and then the first drive of the game in the regular season, what could go the worst wrong goes wrong. Aaron Rodgers last full <laughs> season, he was below average to his standards. Last year, he gets injured, doesn't play for the entire year. We don't know what version of Aaron Rodgers we're getting. We don't know if we're getting two Tom back to back MVP Aaron Rodgers or we are getting Aaron Rodgers that is not the most motivated. So for me, uh, I look at the Eagles. I think they have more younger superstar talent on their team. I trust their coaches with Vic Fangio, Kellen Moore, more than the Jets. Nathaniel Hackett, Dell's mentioned it, is an obvious concern. Um, with the Bills, they have Josh Allen, Sean McDermott. They're always going to be steady. And I think they're getting younger as well. And I love the Curtis Samuel edition. And for the Texans, I mean, the Texans, they're up and coming. They got a superstar quarterback. They just added Neil Hunter to that team. Uh, I'm kind of going back and forth between maybe I should have been higher on the Bengals because the Bengals could be as high as seven or six on my list, realistically. Even though the defense still is a little bit of a question mark. I was shocked you had them at 10. I trust because the biggest thing that I'm concerned about is still the offensive line. For sure. Uh, Orlando Brown Jr. on the left side is not, not good. Uh, and they got Trent, Trent Brown, Brown on the right side, who you can leave him on an island, and he's fine. But he does have some durability concerns. The T. Higgins saga is still going on. I think the secondary will be fine. I think I really think the defense will be fine. Cam mm-hmm. Taylor, Britt, uh, DJ Turner, Mike Hilton, I think that's a solid cornerback trio. Uh-huh. Uh, from all the PFF metrics I've seen with graphs of what corners allow the least amount of separation They are in good standing. They added to the secondary, to the safety position with Von Bell. I thought that was a huge sign, and Dax Hill can play in the slot. I think their secondary will be fine. What worries me is the run defense. defense. Correct. Because you lose DJ Reader, who's such a big part of their defense, and Trey Hendrickson is the only edge I I really trust in, in that defensive line to get after the passer consistently. I think Sheldon Rankins was solid, but I don't know if the Bengals made enough game break it moves to just get by with talent alone. Even though I love the coaching staff, there it's going to have to be an all-around effort for them to be the top team in the AFC this year. And uh, like I mentioned for the Jets, man, I just really don't trust them because uh, Tyron Smith could get hurt. He hasn't played a full season since, I think, 2016. Mike Williams could get hurt. I mean, even if you're talking about best-case scenario with these guys, we're talking about four missed games. That's huge. 
that's huge. And then defense, I don't have a problem with. You know, the defense mm-hmm. is going to be solid. But that offense is still a concern. It really is. So that, that's why I got the Jets at now. I look at it like this. You had arguably the worst quarterback play in football two years running. And this past season, you won seven games. If Aaron Rodgers is, let's say, the 15th to 18th best quarterback in the National Football League, right? Let's just go into, like, worst case scenario outside of obvious injuries. What are we looking at? Nine, ten wins? You make the playoffs, right? Yep. If he's 15 to 18. So if if that's the way that I'm taking it, also, I'm fine with your, your thought process in terms of what history's showing you. You really can't trust him. That's fine. But talking strictly about roster construction, where we stand right now, all these guys are 100% sound. Of course, Aaron Rodgers, we have to wait and see. That's obviously the biggest chess piece of them all. But in terms of talent, there are not many teams in the National Football League I look that has more talent on all sides of the ball than the New York Jets. Uh, the one team that I think stood out to me that unless you guys have in the top five, which I'm not expecting, Miami. I have Miami eight. Miami I, eight. I, I adjusted mine, but Miami is not on my list. Okay, okay. Um, why why did Miami crack your your top eight? So losing Robert Hunt was the worst free agency move for me personally. I know Christian Wilkins in terms of locker room presence, that's a huge loss. But for offensive line with the offensive line already struggling, that was a huge loss, no doubt about it. But the fact that they went and they solidified themselves on the secondary was huge to me. You you, you cut Xavier and Howard, but you, you still have Jalen Ramsey, still one of the best corners in National Football League, maybe not number one, but still in the top five at the absolute worst. But then you go and you bring in Kendall Fuller, the best cornerback free agency of a free agent available. And we're not going to count Lajarius Snead. Obviously he was he was signed and, and franchise tag and traded later. But you go and you bring in Jordan Brooks after losing Jerome Baker. You solidify your your linebacking crew. Uh, I, I still look at at the Miami Dolphins as now one of the best secondaries in football with Javon Holland being one of the more exciting safeties in the league. And Jordan Poyer now comes to the, to the Miami Dolphins as well. This is legitimately we'll one of the him. best secondaries in, in, in football. Yeah, It's going to be tough for, for a Bills fan to watch the Miami Dolphins there. Uh, but this offense is still explosive. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, uh, Raheem Moster, and uh, Devon, uh, Achan, excuse me. This offensive line is definitely a question, probably will be addressed in the NFL draft. But Tua Tungvaluwa is still good enough to... To have this team playing winning football and talent wise, the Miami Dolphins are a talented group. Is that funny, dude? I mean, I, I, it's just funny because like when we used to do the uh, Miami beat a good team challenge, that was, that was a legit thing. Like this team was literally struggling to beat good teams. They beat the Cowboys. They did, but I, they were frauds. That so, was on the road. Is actually Miami ended up one of the worst teams. Yeah. Let me oh, let me ask a question. I, I would like to. You could go, Riff, just real quick. Yeah, yeah, do your thing, brother. Bradley Chubb. What was his injury? ACL. What was Jalen Phillips' injury? Achilles. We're talking about That's pain. their two best edge rushers That's missing huge. a couple games to start the year, most likely, or not being Don't 100%. Catch Buffalo, there was we both, won, yeah, or because Phillips was late. And That's why I respected I Buffalo and, and the Jets. Inkle, He's in Minnesota. Minnesota. Vikings. Correct. Who, who's their edge they rusher? They brought in Shaq Barrett. He's been average. He has been, but these past couple. But of just seasons. for filling that void until yeah. you get Phillips, you get Bradley Chubb back. But then, the, ideally, when Sha- Shaq, Phillips, and yeah, Chubb are together on the field, that's going to be a nice trio. That defensive line is going to struggle, like to start the year a lot. I don't disagree no there. I don't disagree. That's the same with their cornerback group. Though. They were struggling until Ramsey got back. And yeah. I think their cornerback group, like Ramsey and Fuller, is great. But what worries me is that third corner, Cater Kohu. He routinely gets picked on whenever no I watch. Agreed. And then Nick Needham. I, I feel like if you don't have a third corner, it, it really is hard to get. Kohu at three, though. Defensive stops. Don't don't love it. Don't hate it. They could take a corner in the draft. That, too. Corner that too. I still want to see them use that first-round pick on an offensive lineman, though. This is a very, very heavy offensive lineman draft. I think Jackson Powers there, maybe? I think that for sure the center most definitely would be a position I'd look at, even though they did bring in Brewer, but he's for he's sure. average, maybe slightly less than average. But I still respect Miami Dolphins as a Top whole. Top five. No, number eight. Oh, okay. I, I we didn't even do number five yet. No, thank God. I, I thought I heard top five. No, I have them eight. All right, so I changed mine. I took the Jets out, unfortunately. Not in the top ten? Yeah. Wow. Joel kind of convinced me. Where were they at before? I had them at nine. Okay. I did. No, I had them at ten. But I think you convinced me with all the injuries. Like, you guys do I have... I thought you had the Packers at ten. No. That's I'm putting. That's what I'm putting in the ten. Mm, got it. Okay. Think okay. about I'm putting them in the ten, taking the Jets out. If I did have the Packers at ten, they're back ten again. Okay. So it doesn't even matter. Okay. Point of the matter is, the Jets are out. 
because Joel convinced me. That's all that matters. Who's in? Cleveland. Cleveland, okay. They stay in. You didn't have them? Well, what, I'm going to tell you what happened. I forgot the Ravens in this uh, whole okay, okay. shit, mm-hmm. so I had to kick somebody out. I, had so, the, I think I'm having the Ravens the lowest. Which you so are. I didn't hear anyone say the Ravens, right? No. Unless your new spot is... No, I have 10 Green Bay, 9 Cleveland, 8 Cincinnati, 7 Texans, and then I have 6 Buffalo. I have Baltimore at 6. You guys, I'm assuming, have them at 5 or 4. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't think there's, like I don't think there's a huge difference. Um, but they had some big losses this offseason. Losing Mike McDonald, he was... Say it again? You're going to skip five or you're just going to talk about the Ravens? No, I was just going to talk about the Ravens. Then you guys could lead into your top five, assuming they might be close there. Cool. Um, they had some huge losses offseason. Mike McDonald was probably the best defensive coordinator in football. That defense was one of the best defenses we had seen in years. Uh, Ravens aside, just in the NFL. And they lost three offensive linemen. Three offensive linemen. They lost uh, John Simpson and Morgan Moses both to the Jets. They lost Kevin Zeitler. And I think there's still some holes to be filled on the offensive line at receiver, at edge, at corner. But you do have Lamar Jackson, and that's why they're sixth here at this list. Just like, you know, basically all of these teams have elite level quarterbacks. So if he's healthy, this team is going to be in competition to win the AFC North. They're going to be sitting around 10, 11 wins really as a floor. That's what Lamar showed us. Um, but I, I can't just look past their losses. That's why they fell a little bit to six to me. Listen, I think that's fair. With Baltimore, we'll talk about them a little bit more. But um, they did lose a lot this offseason, so I understand that. Uh, five to five to a one. You'll start with five, Drew. Sure. Number five, Houston Texans. Ooh. Okay. I uh, love that, Drew. I have the Eagles at five. I have the Eagles at five. I have the Lions at five. Oh, okay. Okay, number four. This is where I have the Baltimore Ravens. At four, I have the Buffalo Bills. At four, I have the Baltimore Ravens. I have the Packers here at four. Mm, okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because he's laughing. That's, that's, fucked, little, up. I swear that's to God. fucked up for you to do that to me. Uh, number three, this is where I have Detroit. I have Detroit at three. Unfortunately, I do have Detroit here. I have the Ravens at three. Okay. Okay. Number two, this is where I have San Fran. Yeah, I think Lions, or excuse me, 49ers, Chiefs, two yeah. and one for the two rest of Two and one, yeah, yeah. That's undoubtedly consensus. Talk about Green Bay at what, five, you said? Four? Four. Four. He, that's very high. He's a smart guy. He might be. You might you be. You want to know why he's a smart guy? Who do you put at five? Lions. Who's number four? Packers. Who's going to win the division? Packers. For him. He's hoping. He's Green hoping. Bay is special. They are special. Green Bay is great special. Team. They're a great team. Matt LaFleur is a top five head coach in the league. I can get behind it. He top five. is elite. You're an offensive slut, so I get it. I am, yeah, sure. You are. He's amazing. I'm not hating. He's amazing. Let me ask you Just something. To say. Top four. Andy Reid, Kyle Shanahan, one and two. Sean McVay. Sean, yep. Sean McVay. I'll put him over Matt LaFleur. Stefanski is arguable. Stefanski, you said? Stefanski is arguable. I think it's arguable. I would go with Matt LaFleur, though. Well, two-time coach of the year? Doesn't matter? I, I think uh, he's two-time coach of the year. That's all fine. But Mike I Tomlin? think there are a lot of coaches better. At this point in time, I'm going you Matt LaFleur. Name? You don't even like Mike Tomlin. I'm going Matt LaFleur. Sean <laughs> Payton's out there. I'm going Matt LaFleur right now. I think he's that great of a coach. I, I think he's a top five Did head coach. Mike, Mike McDonald? Or excuse me, Mike McDaniel. Yeah. I think Matt Lafleur is over Mike McDaniel. I do. Okay. Um, I think what Matt Lafleur did last year, Mike McDaniel fall off, he fell was special. Off. With Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers won two MVPs. Your guy, Mike McCarthy. Matt Lafleur is better. Okay. He co circles around his team. Ryan Dable, Dan Campbell. Yeah. Well, you don't I'm think what Kevin Stefanski did was special? He did. Ooh, no, Dan, I think what he did was special. Dan That's Campbell's why he won Coach name. of the Year. Kevin Skavansky, There's no Stefanski doubt. has not had Jordan Love, unfortunately. But Matt LaFleur in back-to-back Wait, seasons, never. Aaron Rodgers won MVP after he was declining. I felt like the offense system he put in place was never fully maximized because Rodgers always kind of did his own thing. But with Jordan Love and getting these young offensive players on the same page in the second half of the season, how he did that and managed that I thought was one of the most impressive things that I've seen. Because we this was the youngest offense in NFL history. The defense last year, if I'm not mistaken, was the top 10 unit. Um, it was around there. Mm-hmm. You add Xavier McKinney, but not only do you add Xavier McKinney, you add a defensive coordinator in Jeff Halfley, who now replaces Joe Barry, who is going to implement a scheme that favors the players of Green Bay much better. Joe Barry's scheme was a lot of soft zone. And you can argue, well, late in the season, Joe Barry started cooking up on defense and his defense was doing really well. But Devondre Campbell, who was released from Green Bay, he was asked in a tweet that the Joe Barry defense played a lot better down the stretch and it's the same coach that made you an all-pro. 
And Devondre Campbell answered back by saying this. You want to know why we played better? Because I started going in and having private meetings with Matt LaFleur, telling him we needed to be more aggressive. We needed more man and we needed to blitz more. And what happened when they listened to me, we played well and won. It's no coincidence. How he lays out the situation is what I saw on tape. They played more man. They played more aggressive. Jair Alexander, he could take the reins of being the best corner in the league next year. They re-signed Nixon, who not only is an all-pro returner, but he's a great nickel, and he played great on the boundary. Eric Stokes comes back. Carrington Valentine, a young up-and-coming corner. The corners they have, they have four to five legitimate good DBs. Mm -hmm. Then you have McKinney. They might not be done. They could still bring in Justin Simmons and solidify that secondary. The defensive line the fuck? Is, is, is awesome. <laughs> Because he's been somebody that's been rumored to maybe go to Green Bay. That's why I brought him up. The Eagles I will say, hey just now. talking about the Green Bay Packers defense, their great trait was their secondary last season. That's when they were a top 10 unit. We're top 10 in terms of fewest points allowed. But in terms of yards, that's where it kind of gets sloppy. They were 17th in EPA per play. They were bottom 10 defense. But their secondary is great. I would have liked them to still address that rush unit or rush defensive line. Because that's been a problem with them for some time. Them not having no, the stats is all Joe Barry. It, mm -hmm. It's his fault. Mm -hmm. There is no way that Bryce Young is having a career game with his weapons against that defense. That's a Joe Barry so problem. Isn't. No doubt. Baker Mayfield having a perfect pass rate at Lambeau Field. That's a Joe Barry issue. Uh, now with Jeff Halfley, I think that will get addressed. And they will play to their strengths more. Yeah, I'm sliding Baker Mayfield. And, I mean, it's just the defense is too talented. I mean, Nobody should be having a perfect pass already, and definitely not Baker, with all due respect to Baker. Oh my God. And then I look no, at the offense. <laughs> you add Josh Jacobs, who he might not have the highs of Aaron Jones, but he has the he has more stability. And he's younger. He has more juice in those legs, and he could be a workhorse for them. The receivers, we know how special and talented they are. They're not, there might not be this standout one guy, but the way they complement each other, that's what makes them special. And I think we, we always talk about quarterbacks heading into that second year of breaking out. Jordan Love broke out in the second half of the season. 18 touchdowns, one interception after week 10. He needs to be consistent the entire year next year. I think Jordan Love can win MVP. Mm. I think he can win MVP next year. And I think the Packers, Stop. Jordan Love, Stop. next year will be a top five quarterback after next season. And the Packers, I, I told you guys, I think they're going to the Super Bowl. Out of respect, I ain't you put them that? over the over the 49 Why do you, you say that? I but bad. I think they're going to the Super Bowl I missed, next year. I missed that part. Why did you tell us they're going to the Super Bowl? I think he did, he did say something along those lines. Yeah, I thought I was joking. Probably. No, I don't remember when you said that. You said tough off quarterback? Who did he kick out? I'm curious. So let me Herbert? ask you. Um, not Joe Burrow, Herbert, one of those guys. Joe Burrow. Joe. Jimmy Jordan Love is that special. He's that good. I feel he's like I've good. become the Joe Burrow <laughs> guy all of a sudden between last Joe, year and this year. The kicking Joe out. What the Super that Bowl is one of the worst offensive Yo, lines you've ever seen. Don't forget like? that. Do you know who this sounds like? I'm not even saying this to be funny. Sounds like me when I was talking about Tua. <laughs> who were the names that I was kicking out? What was the statements that I was making? Don't ever compare Jordan Love to Tua. It's not close. Listen, it's statistically, close. Tua was still better than your boy last Use year. Use your eyes. It's not close. It's not close. Oh, really? It's Merchant. Close. Got it. <laughs> um, I think every football fan... With their eyes closed, would take Jordan Love. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, with my eyes closed, would, would they, would they have done that? Tua. With my eyes open, I'll take Jordan Love. Um, <laughs> people would do that after they saw what he did against the Niners. You want the theatrics? <laughs> I'll be honest, Jordan Love. That game against Dallas is better than Tua's ever done things. Of course, ever That's done true. in his career. Yeah. Jordan yeah. Love Are you plays. saying that because it was the playoffs? Because yep. I'm fine with that. Jordan Love because play that game on the road, the game versus the Ravens on the road, down 28. That was like a week three game. Again, like, understood. I it, it was, was exceptional. But there are two young quarterbacks right now that they could walk into that top five next year. CJ and That's CJ and, and J. Mm -hmm. Love. They're special. And they are special. Was Jordan special in that San Fran game? No. In the first half, was he special in the playoffs versus the Cowboys? Yes, he was, he was awesome. Was he special in the second half of the season? He yes, special. he played like a he top three awesome. quarterback. It's, it's that, that no playoff doubt. game and domination over the Cowboys that's stamping it for me. If okay. they would have gone out like they did against San Francisco in, in the first round of the playoffs, I think we'd be having different conversations. And in big time games. I mean, against you go on a road and beat the Lions on fact. Thanksgiving. The, the you Chiefs torch game, them. Next the week, you face game. the Chiefs and you, you torch the Chiefs too. He has some big time moments. Week eighteen versus him? the Bears. He, the no, Bears he, he had the played. best defense mm -hmm. in, his, in, well. in mm -hmm. the second half of the season. I think the last seven weeks they had the number one defense. He he, he bodied them. Mm -hmm. He, did. he Minnesota, bodied Minnesota them. Minnesota also. He basically made the season. Bears say, "Y'all can't keep Justin Fields next year." <laughs> that, that, that's how much he outplayed them. 
Jordan Love performed in big time moments and in his first playoff game. I mean, what he did to the Cowboys it was embarrassing. Yeah, it was that was embarrassing. Whoa, that should have been the last game Mike McCarthy coached for the Cowboys, but they're going to run him back one more year. So you're saying just so we could get no, you're saying Super Bowl MVP MVP top Jordan five. year. Jordan, yeah. Damn. This is the one. It could be. Goes from Will Levis to top five. Well, listen. MVP, man. Yo, fucking let's go, Jordan. Your the career arc is that's nuts. Like a, that's a lot. Your career arc is one We're talking of one. about the best team, Respect. arguably, in the NFL. We have to be. Yeah. When we talk about the Packers and the Lions, objectively speaking, what's a better roster, top to bottom? It's close. close. I think I was. I would, I would I probably was, say Detroit. Still go with the Lions. Why do you say Detroit? I think outside of quarterback, they have more talent. Defensively, the Packers are better defensively. In the second, the secondary is a clearing. Yes, the yeah. secondary. Is a clearing. And I mean, the they just pick up Carlton Davis is a clearing. Uh, Brian Clay Branch Walker, had a great season. You're right. I don't. I don't, I don't know. But if McKinney's Detroit. better than him. The, yeah, sure. Detroit was a, um, essentially elite all season long at stopping the run because they sold out against it. Which, which that's what they did. And I think JJ Reader now gives them more air to breathe in the secondary. But they sold out for the run. That's why they were the worst defense against play action mm-hmm. in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quay Walker is better than any linebacker the Lions got. Defensive line between Aiden Hutchinson and Rashawn Gary, that's really you could pick your poison between those two, and I, and DJ Reader I think maybe gives the edge to the Lions on the defensive line. But when we talk about the depth of the Packers on the defensive line, Kenny Clark or DJ Reader, that can be Kenny Clark too. That's a toss up. Rashawn Gary and Aiden, that's a toss up. I think all of this Lucas close. Van Ness. I just think as a whole, the Packers defensively more talented than the Lions, and offensively. That's where I give the edge to the Lions. I think they got better running backs. They got a better offensive line. They got better weapons. But the unique thing about the Packers is that even though on offense they aren't the most talented, the output is elite on offense. It is. So I I, yeah. I know that on offense I'm getting an elite output from the Packers regardless of who the X guy is. You know, they don't got an Amon Ra, but I know that I'm getting that output. I think the Packers, like, what's to separate it from me, is a defense. I was say the pack do the Packers I say this respectfully, have a Sam Laporta. They don't. No. And and then on top of it, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, the second probably right now contention for number one <laughs> offensive line in the league, a top five wide receiver in Amon Ross St. Brown. Top what? Oh, I said what I said, honey. Offensively, I think it's a clearing. No, offense, the talent. Oh, but yeah. The output. The output, no, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the same argument we're having about the Rams, is that efficiency-wise, they're still going to be and super efficient. Think, and you, oh, yeah, see you later. And do you think, let me ask you something. Do you think if the Packers matched up with the Lions, well, what, they're going to match up? Yeah, they when they match up. At least twice. Are the Lions' defense going to have a tougher time stopping the Packers' offense, or... The Packers defense have a tough time stopping. I think it'll be a shootout. I, I don't think a, either team is going to okay. have a, an easy job stopping each other's offenses. Honestly, I will say that uh, I'm just saying the Packers. I think got more personnel on defense that they could. You could trust Jair Shadow and Amon Ra. Yeah. You know that's why. But I think the Lions have more on offense. But then Jordan Love is the sign factor. I would take him over Jared Goff pretty comfortably. Hmm. The uh, the other team I, I do want to discuss because I had them the highest I believe or maybe we're tied we're, we're the Eagles I, we both had them five I had the Eagles at five where'd you guys have I them? have them nine I have them eight okay so me and River on one side you two are on the other <laughs> I I'll like, give I'll give my case real I'm quick for top five because I thought you would have them lower I did you have them on the eight seven range yeah so linebackers and DBs that's something we've talked about at length it's something we talked about in free agency. Um, I still think could be addressed. They've been in the Justin Simmons rumors. Howie Roseman can make a trade at any time during the day. It won't surprise me. I'd they have, they have plenty of draft picks. He's coming, bro. Plenty of draft picks to be able it's to. Happening. I might too. Uh, to cool. be able to make up for that. All right. But even with losing Jason Kelsey, I think you could still have probably a top five, top seven offensive line. But the biggest additions were the coordinators. You know, okay. moving on from Brian Johnson. Um, who was the defense coordinator last season? It's slipping my mind. Uh, uh, we what, got Van, Van well, they, I was going to say they, they Sean Desai and Matt Sean, They exactly. gave the responsibility they, to Patricia They went to Respectfully, in my opinion One of the worst coordinator positions In the NFL with those two To Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio Who you can make the argument Are two at the best Of their respective positions you do love Kellen Moore Kellen Moore with the Cowboys <laughs> Is putting up some top-notch offenses This past season with the Chargers Not so They're great big upgrades um, Yeah, and then Vic Fangio Is, you know, one of the best Defensive minds we've seen Whether it's Denver, Miami He's been coaching since Longer than love we've been both. alive and then, of course, you bring in Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley, you bring in Bryce Huff to to bolster the pass rush, and of course, Saquon's gonna be the most talented running back they've had since probably Shady. So, this team, talent wise, got better. I do think the holes on defense are still apparent, but I think 
upgrading the coaching staff, which we saw have a from literally go from a first round exit to Super Bowl type of difference from year to year with Gannon um, and Shane Steichen. I'm not saying that they're going to go back to Super Bowl this season, mm -hmm. but I think getting Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio are huge upgrades, which is, which is the right, which is why I would have them in the top five. You know, maybe that's on me. And obviously, coaching is a huge part of. Football, of course, that, that's what obviously can separate where uh, Joel emphasized that whole point with Jordan Love and, and, and LaFleur saying that LaFleur really can maximize his offense because Rodgers had such a stranglehold of what they wanted to do ultimately. But with Jordan now, it allowed him to open up the playbook a little bit more because he's the coach. He has to say over a young quarterback. But in, in a, position, a position like this where you're 100% right, dude, coaching last year for the Eagles was Horrible. They went from Steichen, it, one of the best offensive minds now in the game that we look at, to 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 a guy that really shouldn't have had a job last season. I said with all due respect, and, but Kellen Moore, I still feel like the verdict's not fully out on him, especially after a struggling season with the Chargers being let go by the Cowboys. I feel like he still has something to prove, but I feel like they are a top ten team. You look at the holes that they do have; they're so strong that it's still. The main issues that was probably their biggest downfall to their their season last year. So, which is why I can't come into this season and have them as a top five team when they were a first round exit because their DBs were terrible, or let me not say terrible, playing underwhelming and just not that good as, as or as good as they once were. And then number two, their rush defense was terrible, and I I, I still struggle to to see how they bolstered up those positions when they haven't, and that's the truth. The Eagles lost a Hall of Fame center in Jason Kelsey. I really don't think that should go unnoticed and, and not mentioned because it could have a huge impact. Like, I understand the argument that, you know, Saquon was running behind a terrible offensive line, but it's more than that. It's Jason Kelsey calling out certain blitzes that are happening. For sure. It's him being kind of the quarterback's eyes on the front line and seeing what's happening. That is going to be huge. And I don't, I don't think Cam Jurgens is gonna replicate what he brought to the team. You know, even though he's been trying to mentor him to be that. There's nothing wrong with saying that either. It's and Hall of the, Famer. The run defense, it still hasn't gotten fixed. Like Bryce Huff is not a good run defender with the Jets. That's just an objective fact. Devin White is not good. He's not good. He might be good in Madden, and that's why people's <laughs> opinions of him are swaying, and they not think he's speed, good. Man, facts. In real life, he's just not been a good linebacker. He's been one of the worst linebackers at defending the run. So I think those are all valid. You can you can make an argument that the coaching could take them over the top, but as of right now, I, I do kind of feel like there's a line between the top NFC teams to me. It's the Niners, Packers, Lions, then it's the ne it's the next tier. I feel like those three make up the group to me that I feel like made the best moves in the offseason and they're coming off of great seasons with momentum leading into this year as well. Jim <sighs> Bean. Having a healthy Jalen Hurts is going to change too. Yeah, that's going to change things because he was. It, it felt like since back week in. one he was banged up last year. He was. It was obvious that knee was definitely not in good shape. DeAndre Swift had probably the fakest a thousand yards I've ever seen in my life, and I say that with all due respect because I thought in the be couple beginning, like the couple weeks he was playing, he thought he was him. He, he looked good. He, he, had that, he had the big one eighty yard game against Minnesota. As life started to dwindle and as weeks started to go by, you started to notice that it was fake. He can't read runs. He cuts the wrong way at times. Sometimes he even slips. He can't catch. You Those know, allegations so. always existed on his hands. And, and, and it got worse, you know. So, But I do think this is a team that didn't get worse, got slightly better. They didn't get better at the spots they needed to get better, but they got better. You know, bringing in Saquon is a good move. You did upgrade at the running back position. You did bring in Bryce Huff, who's – Prime to have a you know big year. I think Slay's still good. I think you brought in yep. CJ. We th brought CJ back, which is cool. I do think we need to address linebacker. I do think we need to address corner. I do think how we still have moves to cook up. You know, I think we have about sixteen to seventeen mil left to spend. So I think Simmons is definitely in the cards. He would be a great addition. I, I think we're drafting. You know, the secondary we're drafting linebackers. I think we're bringing in more young talent. I do think Kelsey. You know. Just even off the field stuff, he's a great locker room guy. He is Philly. He is the Eagles. You know, that's a guy who's been here, you know, for damn near a decade. He's been that guy for us, you know. But I think still having Lane Johnson, having Jordan out there, I think Cam is going to be fine. You obviously aren't going to repl replicate what Jason Kelsey does. You you're just not going to do that. But can you hold down the fort? I think so. You know, I think you could still be a top 10 offensive line. I think that's still possible for sure. You know, and I think, you know, 
people are going to look at the secondary. People are going to look at the DBs, and that's going to be the reason. But also, our offense became stagnant towards the end of last year. That's facts. Our offense became stagnant. It became pretty much easy to read. And I think Kellen Moore changes that. You have offense with Hurts, Smitty, A.J. Brown, Dallas, and now Saquon Barkley. There isn't just, just not going to be a way, if you schematically scheme this up correct, that you can stop this offense. So I think that being... Like that being the big upgrade, having two different offensive and defensive coordinators that are just so much better than having the bottom of the league ones is going to make a difference for a team that already has the talent, I feel like. Like I feel like on defense, the defensive line, we have the talent. We just haven't fully put it together yet. You know, shout out to Fletcher Cox. He retired too. Got to show him love. You know, That's Philly a fact. Legend That's for another sure. legend. But mm-hmm. I feel like we still have talent on the defensive line. You know, I just think we need to get some talent in the linebacker department. We need to get some talent in the cornerback department. I think Howie, you know, you can never like you can never count out Howie Roseman. He's always going to cook. But I, I do think I have him five because I just think the offensive talent with Kellen Moore is going to just be so much better than last year. Could possibly be even better than the year before when Jalen Hurts was an MVP candidate. You know, and I think offensively we'll be able to put up a insane type of output. And I think defensively, you know, as long as we just don't. We're just not bottom five. Mm-hmm. I think we're okay. Like, I think we can still compete with other teams in the NFC. We just can't beat, like, a bottom five defense. It's it, tough because last year there was a moment where you guys were a bottom three defense. Yes. Did all you guys have the Ravens outside the top five? I had the Ravens four. I had okay. them four. I had them six. I, I think the Ravens are a top five team. Um, we can't get hell bent on the Chiefs game because all year long they were dominant. You know I mean, I have them as no, the, but in the biggest moment, uh, the, this was your year. I have them as the third best team in the. And AFC I say this as someone right. who believed that the Ravens would win. That would this was the year for the Ravens to figure it all out. This was the most talent surrounding Lamar Jackson. The defense was just so overly dominant. It was amazing. You had Will McDonald, who now is a head coach of an, uh, of his own team. Mike McDonald. They just Mike McDonald, excuse me, Will. Question. I'm thinking Drew, of your guy from the Jets. You don't get tired of putting Miami over the Bills. I didn't. I had the Bill seven. Oh, thank God. I keep thinking he had him five, bro. I really do. <laughs> I just I feel like them eight. the way things ended. I respected the hell out of the Bills and the Jets. It's the way time. things ended for the Ravens, I know Where it was sour. I had Jets six. But the way a play ends can change how you view a team so much. Mm-hmm. It, I just keep going back to the play where Zay Flowers fumbled. Mm-hmm. Jerry Sneed knocked it out. If the Ravens score there, that possibly is a huge momentum switch no, possibly, swinger for, sure. for the Ravens. They could win that game. For sure. And that, to me, I don't think it's Lamar's fault. But wow. I, I look at the Ravens and... You think that's like, Zay Flowers' fault too, though? It's a great play. No, it's, it's exactly. Really play. Sometimes, Sometimes you just got to give play. credit to the defense. Listen, I, it really just is a great play. Sneed. Sneed. Yeah. <laughs> the one, at the shit. half yard line, Sneed just goes and Tillman punches. Mike McDonald is a huge lost. But I look at the Ravens and I, I know they lost pieces... Kevin Zeitler was the biggest one on the offensive line. They lose Kevin Zeitler, Morgan Moses, John Simpson. John Simpson, Simpson is replaceable. Zeitler and Moses, that's going to be difficult. The wide receivers, Zay Flower should be getting better. Mark Andrews is going to be healthy. I think they improve there. Derrick Henry is going to bring a different dimension to their offense. Boing. And on defense, you lose Geno Stone, who he wasn't your starting safety. It was somebody that was just kind of your third safety. I think that's replaceable. And then who else did they lose? And Clowney. They lost. Clowney. No, and then, they, and then they lost Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen. As long as they got Roquan, I trust whoever is next I, to him. I don't mind that. As, as great Patrick as Queen's, Patrick Queen was last still, year. They still kept Justin, right? Matabuki? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's back. Resigned him. Like all, the main, him bag. all the main pieces for the Ravens are still there. The guy, the superstar level players. Yes. Outside of Jadavion Clowney, who left, who he played like a superstar last year. But all the guys are still there. That's why, for me, I still have them as a top team in the AFC. Because in the regular season, I just can't ignore how dominant they were. And then they were dominant against the Texans, too, when they faced them. Just how much do you think Mike Forward McDonald left. played into that defense being so damn good? Uh, Huge. Yeah, I mean, he was... Last season, I, I was trying to pull up the numbers. But last season, this defense just felt so different from what the, the Ravens defenses had been in the past. He was the coordinator there for two seasons. Um, but the 2023 year, of course, when you had Roquan for the full season... We were talking about Lamar Jackson. You know, we were talking about him, MVP case, but we were also having those discussions when we were bringing up the Browns and their historical defense. The Ravens were right up there in a lot of other parts too. So the pieces are all there, um, but you got to find the guy who's going to be putting these pieces together to make it all work. How high can the Falcons climb in this? They could be seven. 
Okay. I feel that's like, best case scenario. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I mean, I think the Falcons are fighting in that second tier in the NFC. Mm-hmm. The Eagles, Falcons, maybe the Eagles. I mean, I have Green Bay in that territory. I know slight Joel, edge. Joel's in a different category do. for me, but I feel like that's that's the group that I would put them in. Also, the tier two guys. I just think that Green Bay's it's still a young team. I understand that. They got the year under their belt. They have a playoff win. You're going to year two. You have these expectations. There's nothing wrong if you're still that playoff team with the playoff win that you're not contending for a Super Bowl. I think that that's still where I would categorize them in. I just need to see the defensive improvements before I'm all in on this being a Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, but that's kind of the grouping that I would have them in. That Eagles, that Green Bay, that that's where they can get to or as the Atlanta. season starts. Correct. Are the only tier one teams in the NFC the Niners and Lions too, guys? I know you have the Packers, but the other you too. To me, at tier one right now, that's where I stand. Respectfully, yes. Okay. Right now, tier two, it would be like Packers would be the the first team in tier I, two. I feel like I there's can't. There's a world Atlanta could sneak into it. Yeah. There's a world. There's also a world where Green right. Bay can sneak into it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know the what Eagles I mean? I think I think the Green Bay is the and best also, team. Also, let me just say this right now: I still am not going to sleep on the Rams. I don't know if they can creep into tier one, but losing Aaron Donald, you need to see That's how huge. the defense looks before you make any strong statements about them. But there's still a ton of talent on that team. I think it's over for the Rams. Yeah. Over? I don't know. It being in a it's tier like one NFC team. Okay, fair, yeah, fair, like fair, fair. That's fine. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I mean, Aaron Donald is such a huge loss. And Raheem Morris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my goodness. You lose two of the biggest pe- reasons why your defense was actually Great. maintainable, yeah. really, <laughs> which was solid. I'm with you. They were hold- Aaron Donald was holding it on by a thread. Because without him, I mean, the Lions smoked them on offense, moving down the field offensively on that defense. And now you don't have anybody that can really bring in that pass rush that Donald does. You know, but that defense held up the, the Lions to 22 points. You know what I mean? It's, what, 22-21? Isn't that what the score ended? Something like that. So, I mean, I still look and understand where you're coming from in terms of just the overwhelming talent of the Rams on the defensive side, just not there. Uh, but still put on put in a great performance against one of the league's best offenses. Am I, am I correct on that? 24-34. 24-23. 24-23. Yeah, okay. I, was, I knew it was one point game. The Lions had 334 yards of total offense. That's pretty good. The Rams had 425. I was going to say, that's pretty good. Yeah. All, c- considering that they had a great rush attack and one of the best pa- vertical attacks to hold them under, or I mean, still a, lot, a decent amount of yards, but against one of the league's best offenses, you'll take it. Especially on the road. And they gave me lost, which is brutal. <laughs> I rearranged the top 10 somewhat. Not really, not a lot. We can just go round table and give her top ten teams. The Bengals, I moved up a little bit, uh, like in the span of like our conversation. Yeah, okay. And that's it really much. it. I, I the, the top five, I ain't really touch it. I ain't touch it at all actually. Um, these are the top ten teams after free agency for the NFL. Number ten, the New York Jets injuries still a concern, but they have a lot of talent. Number nine, the Buffalo Bills. Number eight, the Cincinnati Bengals with a healthy Joe Burrow added Trent Brown to the deep, to the offensive line on the right side. Number seven, Philadelphia Eagles added great talent, but I still struggle to see what the run defense will look like and the pass defense. Number five, the Detroit Lions adding DJ Reader, Carlton Davis, Kevin Zeitler. They had a fantastic free agency. Number four, the Green Bay Packers. Number three, the Baltimore Ravens. Number two, the 49ers. And number one, the Chiefs. Didn't say Texans. I did six. Oh, what the fuck? Did I? No, I don't. I didn't hear you say the Texans. I didn't say the Texans. I don't know. You could have. Yo, I did not know. hear you say the Texans. Number six, the Texans. I feel like you skipped six. I don't I'm know. I'm eight of them. five. Number six, the Texans. They got Daniel Hunter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You did not he say just the Texans. He just said out of sense. He maybe just said yeah, six. Yeah. Seconds. Yeah. He might have yeah. just said this. Okay. So for me, in all caps, at ten, I have the Green Bay Packers. In all caps, nine, I have the Cleveland all Browns. Caps, I don't know why. Okay. And then. <laughs> Eight, I got the Bengals. Seven, I got Houston. Six, I got Buffalo. Five, I got Eagles. Four, I have the Ravens. Three, Detroit. Number two, the Niners. And number one, the Chiefs. At, at number 10, I have the Green Bay Packers. Number nine, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Number eight, I have the Miami Dolphins. Number seven, Buffalo Bills. Number six, big AFC East guy, New York Jets. Number five, Houston Texans. Number four, Baltimore Ravens. Number three, Detroit. Two, San Fran. Number one, unfortunately. 
those Kansas City Chiefs. So if we're doing little switches, I'll switch around the Jets and Texans. I'll give the Texans the benefit of the doubt. So I would have the Jets at 10, uh, health being the biggest question. Texans at 9, they went to the playoffs last year, won a playoff game. Packers at 8, Jordan Love is the truth. I don't know if I have top 5 <laughs> MVP, Super Bowl type of, type of uh, love for them, but I think they'll be in contention to win that division. 7 out of the Cincinnati Bengals with the healthy Joe Burrow. They go from missing the playoffs to being a Super Bowl contender. I do believe that. 6, the Baltimore Ravens. Losing Mike McDonald, losing three-piece on the offensive line does matter, but you have Lamar Jackson. 5 out of the Eagles, mostly because Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio, I think, is a huge upgrade on the uh, coaching staff. For the Buffalo Bills, having Josh Allen is going to always have you in the hunt. And the top three are Lions, 49ers, and Chiefs. A quick word from our sponsor, Factor Meals. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about Factor Meals, Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a meal prep service. And we haven't tried it yet. Just a disclaimer out there. But Factor is sending us meals that we could try all to our addresses. And I don't know if you guys ever have heard about HelloFresh. Of course. It's something like that. I've had HelloFresh before. HelloFresh, I liked it. But the downside to it is that when it gives you the meals, you have to cook it yourself. Mm. Now, the flip side is that factor, they send you these meals prepped already. So you don't have to cook it yourself. You just pop it into the microwave. It's easy. The meals are ready to go. And we're going to try it in in a bit. I'm excited. It's like getting DoorDash your food. But factor, tough. Okay, I'm here for that. Healthier, too. Yeah, I need that. I need that, especially because after I'm done with the gym, I'm not trying to think about my next move in terms of food. I'm just trying to just... Hot that right and I'm definitely it. trying to cut out all the nasty stuff that I've uh, been intaking because I'm definitely the nastiest eater over here. And if you're, you're trying to cut nasty. down on the nasty you're stuff. You're a big, big eater. Yeah. Factor is huge for that. <laughs> top, top one and one. <laughs> they have 35 different options to choose from every week. So Damn. every week you can choose different options. Calorie smart, protein plus, keto. And also 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day long. Two-minute meals. They got pancakes, smoothies, and more. You can discover a wide variety of all the foods they got. And head to factormeals.com slash PAS50 and use code PAS50 to get 50% off. 50% 50% off is a lot. That's a good amount. That's half. Yeah, half. Literally half, half off is half. insane. That's what it is. I love half off. That's okay. the code <laughs> PAS50 at factormeals.com slash PAS50 to get 50% off. Shout out to Factor for sponsoring this episode. The biggest move that happened in free agency, and this happened recently, was that Legereus Snee got traded. He got traded for a third round pick and a seventh round pick. The Titans sent a third round pick in 2025. And a seventh round pick in this draft, and the Chiefs sent Sneed and a seventh round pick next year. So the third round pick the Chiefs are getting, they're not going to see until next year's draft. Who knows what to do with it? They trade it, they keep it. Who knows? Uh, are you surprised that Lajerry Sneed went for this little? I'll say I am surprised that it was a third. Uh, I will say that I'm not overly surprised because Kansas City kind of showed their hand on this. Understand that they franchise tagged him. Already the rumblings were that Sneed wanted to be traded, kind of putting to the outside public that, or the outside eye that Legereus Sneed was not going to return as a Kansas City Chief. So what are you going to do now as the front office? Let's just make sure we get some type of converse, uh, compensation so that in this offseason, we don't lose Legereus Sneed for nothing. We can have Legereus Sneed on this last ride, make give us our, our best chance of winning three in a row. I would understand wholeheartedly, especially if you lost him after that. You kind of can live with that as you won three championships with him as your your lead corner. But they kind of showed their hand here. And so you, you take the compensation as is. I think that if you're Kansas City and you're a Kansas City Chief fan, you're definitely not happy with this situation. But I can't say I'm, I'm overly surprised because, again, it was kind of made public to the world that – LeJarrius Sneed was not going to be a Kansas City Chief after this season. Just the hope that they can get anything in return, I guess you have to look at his W. Third round pick surprised me because that's the high end in terms of comp picks. If LeJarrius Sneed just played on the franchise tag and next season walked and got the same contract, about $20 million per year, they would have got a third round pick, you know, compensatory pick, that is. So the fact that he didn't go anything more than that, I was surprised because if I'm the Chiefs, why don't we just play for this one year? You understand at the end of the year, you're a free agent, but we could have you as part of this possible three-peat. So on that end, I was surprised. And the other end, 
I don't know if, especially hard for players who are elite. I think we all agree Legereus Sneed is elite. We could have disagreements with a guy like DeAndre Swift too, especially in fantasy football. You have kind of this one side of media and the internet and be like, well, for fantasy football, this dude is great. He's amazing. But then when you watch him in real life, you're like, okay, he has some you know problems with vision and you know secure, uh, holding on to the ball and stuff like that. Um, but for a guy like Legereus Sneed, who there's really no flaws in his game this past season against uh, this past season in zone, he was first in coverage success rate. He allowed the lowest completion percentage on throws that went 10 or more air yards. He allowed a 55 passer rating. The Super Bowl, he was fantastic. They played Miami twice this past season. He allowed just one reception on eight targets to Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill. Those Damn. numbers line up against, against receivers like Jamar and Stephon Diggs when he was lined up amongst them. Um, he didn't allow a single touchdown until the second round of the playoffs this past year. And there's only two games all season where he allowed 50-plus receiving yards. So I was very surprised that there wasn't more rumblings or more rumors around teams trying to go out and acquire Legereus Sneed, especially when you take into account his contract wasn't some record-breaking contract. He got a four-year, $76 million contract. Annually, that's 19 per year. That's the eighth most amongst all cornerbacks. He got $55 million guaranteed. Didn't Jalen get more? Yeah, he did. Jalen's, I'm pretty sure, number one. Or maybe I think Ward's one, number one. Um, $55 million guaranteed is the fifth most amongst all cornerbacks. This feels like a steal for the Titans. You know, the Titans are in a bit of a weird situation. We're going to talk about them more in the next topic. But we don't look at them as prototypical contenders. You have Will Levis there who showed some flashes as a rookie. But overall, you're going into this que- this year with a huge question mark at your quarterback position. But they made a lot of moves, whether it's Calvin Ridley, Tony Pollard, beefing up... Um, you know, some of the offense and defensive line, and now bringing up Legarius Sneed, who is by far and away their best corner and by a top five corner probably at worst oh, in yeah. the NFL. The only question, or maybe the the only thing that, that kind of stops me from thinking that this isn't a, um, you know, like teams don't want to go out and give up draft capital is they just weren't willing to give Sneed this type of contract because it feels like a third round pick for his caliber seems more than fair. So, that's really the only thing that would be a stalemate in my eyes if I'm an opposing team was, well, we really like Legereus Sneed, but I guess we don't want to make him a top 10 paid corner in the NFL. So credit to the Titans. This felt like a um, a buyer's market for Legereus Sneed where there wasn't a ton of teams going out there and they weren't really competing with a lot of teams, especially when the Lions went out and traded a third round pick as well for Carlton Davis. So I'm looking at, number one, the Chiefs, who could have just said, why don't we just keep you for one last ride? And I'm looking at other teams like the Eagles, for example, who I know you know money-wise can be a bit different. You're paying Hurts and paying some dudes, but just other contenders around the league who could have added a top five corner at a top 10 price and given into account the draft capital being only a third round pick, that's really like a top 20 or top 30 price. So you got to give credit to the Titans. Um, and I understand from the Chiefs' perspective, there's gonna some guys that just aren't gonna be able to last when you have Mahomes on this contract and you got to pay dudes like Chris Jones this offseason. Um, but overall, if you're a Titans fan, this is you know probably up there with one of the best moves in all of free agency. I'm disappointed he's not on the Kansas City Chiefs. I wanted him to be there, man. Um, Lejerry Sneed is elite, and I love his game and I love his versatility. This year, he shadowed wide receiver ones. Not one wide receiver one had over 100 yards in him all season long. He was elite. But in previous years, 2021, 2022, he was one of the best slots in the NFL. He played 53% of his snaps in the nickel, in the slot. And then last year, he goes and he's on a boundary shadowing guys. That type of versatility cannot go unnoticed. And that's what makes him so elite. Since 2021, he is number one in defensive stops, number one in pressures, number one in sacks, number one in snaps of press. He's a physical downhill corner. I think a couple things are at play here. The main one being that I I think other teams didn't want to give him the contract because from some reports that I read, he has a knee issue. And it's I don't know how big of a deal it is, but the trade hasn't officially gone through because he's pending a physical. Because his knee, he was playing through a knee injury last year. It didn't look like it affected him in any way, but that may have you know, scare some teams off. We don't want to trade some draft compensation and then pay this guy. And then we get him and we realize that his knee is kind of messed up. And now he's not the same with us. As for the Chiefs, I kind of feel like they're getting to a point that they feel like they can get away with anything because they have Patrick Mahomes. You already traded Tyreek Hill. If not the best, he's number two. Number two wide receiver in the NFL. 
if you traded that away and you were you were able to win two Super Bowls, Brett Veach is over here looking like nobody is irreplaceable. Anybody outside of Mahomes and Kelsey and Chris Jones, those are the big three, are replaceable. You look down a list of all the players that the Chiefs have just let walk over the years. Marcus Peters, Kendall Fuller, Steven Nelson, Charvarius Ward, D4, Tyron Matthew, Juan Thornhill, Frank Clark, Emmanuel Ogba, Willie Gay, now Legereus Need. There's a lot of pro bowlers and all pros that I that I just named here. When you're paying Mahomes that much money, you got to make these sacrifices. But now it just changes the dynamic of their defense because I think they have to go with a corner in the first round. This is a really corner-heavy draft, so they can find one. But now Trent McDuffie, who the role that I thought he really thrived in last year was in the nickel off those blitz looks. He was number one in blitzes. Now he has to get pushed out to the boundary. Now he has to shadow who Legereus Need was shadowing. And now you have to trust your corners outside of that. So I feel like this was a big loss. And, and I do think that Brett Veach is taking Mahomes for granted. We saw how ugly it got this past year. They were still an average offense, but we saw how ugly it got because he didn't pay attention or wasn't attentive to the wide receiver position. And he let that kind of just go because, you know, I got Mahomes. Defensively losing Legere Sneed, this is one of those moves that strikes me as you know, you're just kind of putting a lot of maybe too much weight on Mahomes' shoulders to do everything or spag shoulders, which I'm not saying he can't handle, but if you want to keep winning, you have to stack the deck with overwhelming talent. And I, I feel like letting somebody like Jerry Sneed just go for that draft compensation, like you said, it, it could have been a compensatory pick if he just had stayed and played on the franchise tag. I feel like that was a mistake because Chris Jones, if only Chris Jones played on the franchise tag last year. And I feel like the reason why he played with his ass on fire in the playoffs is because Chris Jones had incentives in the playoffs. Each playoff game they won, he got like an extra one or two mil. And he played on it, and he was fine, and then he got his contract extension. I feel like they could have wrote it out one more year with him. I do think, for me personally, first of all, Sneed had an amazing year. You know, you talk about the Saucers and the PS2s of the world. He had that type of year. He was one of the best cornerbacks, if not the best cornerback in the league last year. You know, watching him up close and personal with my Bills and what he did to Stephon Diggs and the company, it really did hurt my heart, truthfully. Um, I think I'm more confused about why not a lot of teams were on this deal or not, not a lot of teams mm, were calling in. You know, I think the money is whatever. You know, I don't think Sneed was asking for too much anyways, especially, you know, he's been great, but this was his first elite year. You know, I think for the most part, I'm surprised not. Like like you mentioned, <coughs> Philly was a team that had a little bit of money. You know, they do have a couple guys they got to pay. I know Smitty's coming up soon, and Hurts' contract is going to kick in. But for just the one-year gamble, and, you know, you're a team that's always in Super Bowl or bus conversations. You know, I thought a team even like Chicago that had a lot of money, you wanted to grab a partner for Jalen Johnson. Why not go get Snead? A team like Detroit, instead of getting Carlton Davis, could have went out here and paid Jerry Snead that type of money. Could have sent out a third in the seventh round. You know, so like a, even a team like Houston, who maybe not have needed it but had the money. You know, so I'm surprised that teams in uh, the Colts, another team with a lot of money that could have made this deal. So it was shocking to me that it was the Titans, a team that we thought would be in full rebuild mode. And I guess the best way to do that is acquire talent, you know, and they acquired a good one. Like you mentioned, didn't pay him too much money. You know, Jalen Johnson does get paid more than him. I do think Snead is a better corner than Jalen Johnson. I just was very surprised at the fact that, you know, not a lot of teams are on it. And if it was because of his, you know, pending physical and the fact that he is injured, that's interesting. But from what we saw last year, it did not look like that stopped him nope. at all. It looked like he actually looked better with the injury. For sure. So, I, I like, I don't know. I do think, you know, the Chiefs just letting go, letting talent will eventually catch up to them. You know, I know Mahomes is great. You know, I know we, you know, they got that tweet with LeBron. When is this fuckery going to end? It sounds like it's that with Patrick Mahomes. Like, shit, we got yeah, like 15 when, years when is him. this shit really going to end? But, with, you know, with, with football, it's a lot different. It's really more team constructed. And Kelsey's Fuck getting her. old. Chris Jones is getting old. You know, you're not going to be able to have that big three. You know, what if Andy Reid, he isn't going to coach forever. You know, so I do think Thank eventually... God. Brett is going to realize, like, this is like losing these top towns, like you mentioned, is going to eventually catch up to them. Maybe it'd be, you know, as quick as this year. I'm not going to say that, you know, at all, but Trent McDuffie's a great corner. I think we all, everybody at this table loves Trent McDuffie. Like, I think everybody in the world loves Trent McDuffie. You know, he's a a dog, but that that one two combination duo was kind of like, 
you know, an elite one-two punch in the defense like that you just can't really replace. Even in the draft, in the first year, you're not going to be able to replace what Snead gave you. Like, that, there's only few that can do that. So I think, you know, losing him is tough. I think shout-out to the Titans for making that move. But I do, I do am shocked that not many teams – we're jumping on this deal, jumping on a player of Snead's caliber. Because I think if he goes to a team, like, for example, like I said, if he goes to a team like Chicago, that's literally a piece or two away from really competing in the NFC, then you can look at a guy like Snead coming in, that for sure upgrades your defense. If Caleb is the truth, now you're looking at a different type of team. A team like Detroit, that was a game away from the Super Bowl. This is a move you kind of should make to kind of put yourselves in those conversations with the Niners. But, you know. Rivia, I think you're kind of sleeping on what Tennessee's cooking. I'm not. I think they're cooking something cool. Yo, I think they've been cooking all off season. The only problem is for me for Tennessee is what is Will Levis? What is he? Are you building a team too early? You know, are you are you building a team for the wrong quarterback? You know, like it, it's so many questions. Like what what all this money you're throwing at these players is Will Levis gonna be the guy? Because I think this team is cool. I think they've built up a nice little secondary. You know, they got some guys on the line on the offensive line, uh, offensive line. Like I said, they picked up some cool wide receivers. You know, Ridley's cool. Hopkins is still there. He's cool. cool. You know what I'm saying? Pollard's cool in the running back department. Spears is cool. But what is Will Levis going to be? Like, what 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 is it's, his it's ceiling? CBD. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, and you could go either way though. But you're in a division with AR for sure. CJ, Trevor Lawrence. You can't forget Trevor Lawrence. Like like people forget. Even I forget sometimes because CJ was so amazing. But those are three quarterbacks that are literally like they have elite type potential. And then you got Will Levis. So it's like that's a that's a tricky boundary there's, to there's play. There's definitely apart. there's obviously a gap. Um, but you could also build this team kind of the Atlanta Falcons way, where I mean they did have Matt Ryan for years, where you build everything around the quarterback and then you find the quarterback and place him in there. Will Levis, second round pick, he's not getting paid a lot. If he ends up being fantastic, you just got a you know a great value because he's making, I don't know, two, $3 million sure. for the next three seasons. And if he doesn't work out, it's like, all right, it was a high second round pick, but we move on. Even if it's a first round pick, you know, just cut your losses, move on, try to find another quarterback. Um, but it's really going to be, is Bill Callahan, number one, going to be a good head coach. I don't know if he, if they've said who's going to be calling plays, if it's him, the offense coordinator, um, of course, Will Levis. But then from the Chiefs side, you guys have mentioned McDuffie, and that could be a reason why they let Snead go, saying that, Couple years down the line, we're gonna to have to pay McDuffie. They could have, you know, sat there in their meeting room and say, "We either pay Snead now and maybe trade McDuffie later, or we keep, uh, or you know, vice versa, where you, you, yeah, you, you keep McDuffie and extend him a couple of seasons from now." Because I'm looking at the Chiefs' cap space for next season. They only have it looks like like 22 or 23 players under roster. Um, so yeah, 23 total players on their active roster next season with just under 50 million dollars in cap space. So I mean, it's kind of like a reset to the roster. 23 players. You're talking about less than half of you know an actual um, you know 52 man roster or whatever. 52, 56. What is it? 53? 52. 52. Um, so they still got next season kind of to revamp this team in a sense or, or reconstruct it, but they don't have a ton of money. 48 million dollars in cap space. When you have 40 or 45 guys, that's fantastic. <laughs> but when you're trying to fill out an entire roster, that $48 million, you really got to make stretch. Of course, you have extensions and restructures, and you can do cuts and trades to make that money, um, you know, you know, get more money for your cap space. But overall, you still have a ton of moves to make uh, for 2025, and that probably played a part in how, it too. But how long? Because, you know, you look at um Pollard. Pollard's relatively young, but, you know, he's a running back, so you know, running backs get a little older. Uh, really, it's going to be 30 yeah. soon, you know, Sneed is 27. So, like, he ain't going to be uh, – I hope he is, but, you know, he'll be 20 – he's 27 now. He's not going to be elite forever. You know, if he is, that's dope. You know, so this roster, like, you you picked up some guys, but, you know, you picked up some guys that are probably, like, in their prime or a little bit over their prime. So, it's like – and you gave him a good amount of money. So, I don't, I don't know. They I, could look at this division and say it's winnable. Like, I had the Texans – I know you guys were hiring the Texans. I had them, at, I guess, after my adjustment, ninth, you know. You guys have them a little higher, five, four, five, six around mm -hmm. the earth. I don't know. Okay, it's top five, seven. Yeah. Okay, but still, we're looking at them like they're one of the better teams in the NFL, but they're not top three. This but isn't I, the Kansas City Chiefs. But I There's think they're, it's winnable if two out of the three teams we named in front of them collapse. That's the thing. Like, I think, I think maybe not two, but I think either Houston, Jacksonville, or the Colts will have to collapse. It could be. To I mean, if Bill Callahan's a good coach, if he comes in and he has a. But D'Amico's a good coach. You know, uh, Doug Peterson's percent, a good coach. Percent. You know, they, they're all great coaches in that division. But I'm saying if you come in, you have, um, you know, a D'Amico Ryan's like impact yeah, year one. True. And you could be in contention. It's like, I don't know if the, if the Texans are going to win 11, 12, 13 yeah, yeah. games. And you just run away with it. So why I've been so 
consistent with the love I've shown the Tennessee Titans is they, they've just been trying to improve. That's all you can do, especially in a division where you have CJ, like you've already mentioned, Riv, CJ, Trev, AR, and you have, rise of right now, the worst quarterback in the division. I think we all can consensually agree on that, and it's not a conversation. But you had obvious holes, and we talk about the Eagles, how they've made some nice splash moves, but they haven't addressed their holes. When we talk about the Titans, what are their holes? Offensive line and the secondary. They had one of the worst secondaries in the league last season. They had one of the worst blocking offensive lines in the game. So so what do you go out and you do? You sign Lloyd Cushenberry? No, very very Cook. clean. Very it's clean. New jersey. No, he looks good. Um, I, I love seeing that as opposed to the red one. Um, I... I love Lloyd Cushenberry. You go and you get the best available center in, in free agency. You drafted Peter Skronsky last season. You're probably going to draft another offensive lineman at pick seven. So now you clean up the left side. So you go and you lose Derrick Henry. That sucks. We're talking about one of the best running backs of our generation. But now I've already spoken about this on the show. You have versatility in your running back room where you have Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard who have sim- similar characteristics where they both are great rushers but also very solid pass catchers as, as well. You need another wide receiver. Traylon Burks, unfortunately, can't stay on the field. You go and you give Calvin Ridley a, a decent amount of money. But this was after he just had an 1,000-yard season, had eight touchdowns, almost do- double digit touchdowns if he just gets an extra foot in and this is coming off of missing almost two full years of football I mean that's pretty damn good if you ask me I've really come full circle with Calvin Ridley's situation you put him alongside DeAndre Hopkins now I understand what you're saying Riv this all does come down to Will Levis but you also had to clean up the holes Chidobe Awuzie was a great signing from them for the secondary room and now they just traded for arguably the best corner in football last year no question about it in terms of coverage there was nobody better than Legarius Sneed so You went from having one of the worst to now, hey, we got to throw some fucking respect on your name. Now you have one of the better secondaries or at least one of the better cornerback rooms in National Football League. You've been one of the better rush defenses in the league. You've been pretty damn solid at getting to the quarterback, but your your holes had been so bad that it really deteriorated your your team and how people viewed you. Brian Callahan now comes in. I think he made that mistake because Bill's his father. Bill but here. Bill is on the roster and he is one of the better offensive line head coach or coaches in the league. So you get that connection. Now we can address that terrible hole where off, our offensive line now has the luxury of working with one of the best on top of signing the this this talent and drafting this talent to really shape up something around Will Levis. Now can they compete for the AFC South? I know this is going to be the question. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun a little bit here. It's all dependent on Will Levis. I think that he does have traits to be a good quarterback in this league. I don't know about franchise. That's, again, that's very dependent on him, but he has a strong arm. He has the ability to extend plays. His issue is his pocket presence. I agree, no doubt about it. He takes too many sacks, especially understanding he does have a bad offensive line. And I give a lot of blame to the offensive line. You still have to be aware and aware of your situation. But because of the versatility, because now you have some improved talent, not only as the weapons, but in front of you in the offensive line, you improved your secondary. The Titans are a respectable team and a team that I have taken strong notice of since the very start of free agency. I was a year too early, man. Should they we- made a lot of moves. I'm Tony Pollard, Cushenberry. Kenneth Murray, I, I don't like Kenneth Murray. I think he's trash. But a Calvin Ridley, Sebastian Joseph Day, a Wuzie, Sadiq Charles, Legereus Need. Even with all these moves, plus six hundred to win the AFC South, Ooh. in last place behind the Colts, the Jaguars, and the Texans. You mentioned something interesting. Like two of the three teams need to collapse. I have full faith in the Texans, a hundred percent. Me too. The Jaguars, I don't have faith in them. I, I don't think they, they fixed still- anything. Their receiving core got worse. Their offensive line added Mitch Morse, but Mitch Morse was average last year. Secondary still isn't good. Uh, th- I don't know. I, I think they that's the way to see Number one. Me. What number two? Eh, it wasn't good last year. year. Last year was a zone scheme. This year they're like man press heavy. I want to see what they're going to be first. But uh, Optimistic. Eric Armstead, Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, they're moving to a 4-3 defense. So I think that's going to be much more beneficial for Trayvon. He's going to have more true pass rush snap sets instead of dropping back into coverage. He needs Same to with lock Josh in. Allen. So I think their defense could be somewhat solid, and I really trust Ryan Nielsen. And with the Colts, I look at the talent the Colts have in the Titans, and I really don't think there's a separator there. Anthony uh, Richardson. That's the separator, but Jonathan Anthony Tills. Richardson is yet to be proven. Um, 
defensively, well, Michael Pittman, D. Hop, Ridley, you can argue that the Titans receiving core. I would take Pittman pretty equal. comfortably over those guys. Oh, if you want to say it's a core, Josh Downs. I like yeah. Josh. Man. I like Josh Downs too. I just think it's pretty equal. You Come look on. at defense. Je- Jeffrey Simmons is the best player, yes. defense player between the two that they got. Sure. The secondary for the Titans is clearing the Colts. Really, top to bottom, talent for talent, it, it's pretty I just pretty assume similar. last year you had a pretty, you know, I think pretty successful season in my eyes with yeah. the Colts because you lost your starting quarterback. You know, he didn't get the chance to, you know, improve and progress like a regular rookie because he missed a year. You went out there, you put out Gardner Minshew, and you still damn near could have won the division. It came down to the last two, three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Something around there. So now you come into this year. You haven't made the insane splash moves, but I think you still get better in home, get better within the organization. You bring back your quarterback, and I, I, I do believe in AR. That's what I'm thinking. The Colts are going to be better than the Titans. I believe in AR too, but I mean, the thing that I am so skeptical about is can he stay healthy? Yeah. I mean, he lasted what, four games? And then it it was in and out with injury. It wasn't just four healthy straight, it was four games where he was constantly hurt through those four games. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm I'm still, you know, look, keep my eye out for. The Titans on defense 20th in EPA, 30th in dropback EPA, 12th in rush EPA. Last year, their corners, Christian Fulton, he's now on, with the Chargers. Sean Murphy, Bunting, he went to the Cardinals. They were one of the worst secondaries, like you mentioned. Four corners last year, among 45 cornerbacks with 400 coverage snaps, didn't allow a touchdown. It was four. Ma- uh, Martin Emerson, Mike Hilton, Roger McCrary, and Legereus Sneed. So the Titans have two of the four guys that didn't allow a touchdown amongst 45 corners with 400 cover snaps last season. You look at Snead, highest wide receiver one shadow rate. McCrary's one of the better nickels in the league. Awuzie is really good, plays physical at the line. This secondary, is, they have gotten so much better that you trust them against any offensive wide receiver grouping. You look at within their own division, Legereus Snead versus the Texans versus Nico Collins, McCrary or Awuzie versus Tank Dell. They can match up with them. The Colts, they can match up with them. The Jaguars, I feel like they would overwhelm them. I don't believe in what the Jaguars got going I, on I right now. I think the Texans kind of light up the Browns' defense, so I don't know. I think. Uh, moments, I just think that these, these corners are just, you trust that personnel grouping, and it now allows you to play defense in a different way. You can be more aggressive on defense. I do agree that this is very reliant on Will Levis, and yeah. there have only been uh, there are five teams that have the longest active streaks of not scoring 30-plus points in a game. Number one is the Titans at 36 games. Damn. Number two is the Patriots at 28. What's Number three is the Falcons at 17. Damn. Number four Damn. is the Broncos at 13. And tied for fifth is the Commanders and Chiefs at nine. So the Titans have a long drought of not having offensive Chiefs? success. Chiefs run that. What, was, uh, what was the number for the Chiefs? Nine. The Chiefs was at nine consecutive it's pretty games. Pretty Yeah. Uh, I have the yeah. I have the Titans 2024 opponents. Here we if go. We want to run through them. I like that. So we have all the division games: six division games, three at home, three on the road. I say two and four. Or excuse me, eight, three, six. I'm tricking. Here we go. Six. Say it again. Six. Yeah. There's I'd say they three go two opponents. And four. There's four total. Stop. I said they go two and four. <laughs> <laughs> two and four. Yeah, I said they go two and four. Okay, so we'll go through the am whole games look, first. Am I going to be the basic three and three? <laughs> <laughs> That's valid. Two and four is valid. Two and four. Okay, so we're starting base two and four. Say if it's home or away. We're going to do home first. There we go. New England. Win. Let's win. win. Three and four. Or who's going to keep count? Right? I'll keep count. Three and Joel, four. Please no. Uh, the Jets. Loss. Three and five. The Packers. Loss. Three and six. The Vikings. Uh, it's dependent on Sam. It's a home Just game. Win somewhere. I'll say they'll sneak this one. <laughs> that could be four and six. It's okay. at home, home too. Yeah. 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 The Bengals. L. Four and seven. Oh. Okay. They could win this game. I, I can't. I can't Sneaky give them both. Sneaky could win. Both. Sneaky. I can't give them both. Right now, I'm just really going off a of favorite. I can't give right. Vikings. I'm not mad at that. I'm, I'm not mad at that. Draw. So now away games. So they're four and seven. Four, right four and seven right now. Yeah. Miami Excuse Dolphins. Oh, this is a loss. It's a, it should be a it's loss. In Miami. Miami's going to be have yeah, some revenge on their mind. <laughs> yeah. Buffalo Bills. This is a loss. Four and nine. Chargers. This is a W to me. Could win. No, it's five and nine. Yeah. Yeah, they could beat them. Chicago Bears. This is a loss to me. It's a loss. This is sneaky. Too. Nice, you're back. This is sneaky too. Detroit Lions. Five and this is 10. a loss. Five and eleven. Brother. Five and eleven. Commanders. This is a W to me. Six and eleven. It's tough. 
That's, that's what I'm a tough saying. There's, there's definitely that is a tough ass yeah, that's schedule. That's not You're a terrible the schedule. AFC East. See, that's what I'm saying. Two and AFC four. North. Are we saying the two and four? Listen, we can give them an extra win by giving them the three and three in the division. I feel like that's fair. They can beat any team in that division. They can literally they can go one lose. and five though too. They can go both ways. What if they went four They're and not two? Terrible. <laughs> I just say who, five and one. Who's the two losses? Crazy. Texas. Uh, one to the Texans. One to the Colts. Sweep the Jags. We're here. I was going to say the Jaguars. Actually, they did beat the Jags. They did last week of the season. Yes. I'm, let's go back to three and three. Let's get them to seven. Did they beat the Texans or did they split? We can't do three and three for every team because I feel like we're going to do that every division. No, not we every are. division. Not every division. We did that last division. Chicago, we gave them the three and three. Did we? Yeah. I feel like we look at the uh, the South, the NFC South, and we'll probably be like, ah, nah, we'll probably give some. some they lost to the there. Texans twice. The we Titans went seven. five and four at home, one and seven on the road. They were six and 11 last year. Were they, they in their division? division? Say three and three. It didn't even show. I don't know why Google didn't show uh, this. Let me look Google. at it. What the f- they went five and Remember four? Remember when I was the look up something guy? And we, we stopped terrible. You. Yeah. They, they were one and five. That's terrible. We got to go to two and four. <laughs> All right. No, no way they can go three and three. Yeah. No so, way. Uh, no way. Yeah. We just <laughs> talked about it. They no made way. improvements. No, I, I do think that this is like now an eight to nine win team if things go right. You know, because you never know how some nine? of those games can uh, pan out. Nine, I think it has everything has to go right. Nine means they beat Green. Uh, they, they beat, beat the, the Bengals. They beat the Texans one of the times. They Nines mean they're damn near pushing for the Listen, division. I think this is how I look at it. They won six games last year. Yeah. And they had personnel groupings that were a disaster. Good point. The, the secondary was a disaster. The offensive line was a disaster. Uh, Will Levis had a 22% pressure to sack ratio, one of the worst marks in the NFL. But uh, PFF separates... Pressures that some of the responsibilities on a quarterback and the responsibilities on the offensive line, 6.8 point percent of dropbacks, he had some responsibility with the pressure. Mm. 91.5% was on the offensive line. It was one of the worst marks. I think number one was Joe Burrow. I think number two was Will Levis and the Titans. The offensive line did him no favors. And the way that Will Levis's play style is, is that he will hold on to the ball to search for some deep plays down the field. I think he's a gamer. What he needs to fix is the completion percentage because it was at 58%. But I do think that there were enough positive signs for you to believe in him being a good starter. You look at the first game in his debut, four touchdowns. How can against, we forget, man? Yeah, that was, he was special in that it's game. A movie. Against the Steelers Thursday Night Football, I thought he was solid. And then the comeback versus the Dolphins. Even before that fourth quarter comeback, I thought Will Levis was really good, and he gifted them 14 points off of turnovers, too. And he still let a comeback. I thought Will Levis, when you take into account the situation, he played decent. You know, when you look at the stats that him and Richardson had and him and Bryce Young had, it was pretty identical. So that's why I'm (laughs) I'm not knocking the Titans for trying to build around Will Levis because they have to bring in talent for somebody. And Will Levis has a talent, could have been a first rounder. We're not knocking the Panthers for trying to surround Bryce Young with talent. So, you know, this is all dependent on Will Levis, but I think their defense has such a high floor that they could win games if they run the ball effectively. And then they just ask Will Levis to do a little bit of everything. You know, Mm -hmm. he doesn't have to be top 10. He can be in like the 18s of quarterbacks and they can have a eight to nine win season. He needs to work on his touch. This man has every, every throw I've seen of his, it's fastball, fastball, that fastball. Strong. Yeah. There's, there's very few, like, you know, you know, a man, we do those little, like kind of hold on to the line, just goes loops and over. He doesn't have a ton of that. Hopefully in the off season, he could get lock in. A little finesse. You've fallen on Joe Burrow, man. How did I fall on Joe Burrow? Fell off. I did not. I said Jordan Love could be better than him. It's nuts. Jordan Love is in that company, baby. Christ alive. He's, he's in that company. You did this. You fueled that dragon. Did I? Who's okay. going to be the new Joe Burrow guy? I guess me. Okay. I can't have Lamar. Yeah, you can't do that, unfortunately. I'm good off that. Drew? <laughs> I, just listen, I, I, Joe start, well, I started to say. He's going to be better than Joe uh, Burrow. So he's but I also started to say that I need to start appreciating him more. He's the only guy to slay the beast. So you, you know, know what? I'll have to take the reins. Sure. I'll take the reins. Right, Two of shit. You know, there was a stat. I don't care. There was a stat I seen. I said two or shit. Come on. It's my brother. It's I have a bookmark. I have everything so important so bookmark. Let's in your hearts. Top right touchdowns. Why is there so many women? <laughs> <laughs> Ice Spice League. Check replies. I looked for that. 
<laughs> so this is a uh, quarterbacks playing from behind. Here are all the instances since 1999 where quarterback took the field with under five minutes, mm. down by eight or less, win probability less than 50%, and left the field with a win probability over 50% on their last play or their team tied or took the lead. All right, Peyton Manning's on here. So Joe Burrow had 15 behind situations, 11 conversions. He loves being behind. 0.73% conversion rate. Number two is Patrick Mahomes, 25 behind situations, 14 conversions, 56% conversion rate. Josh Allen, he's, I'm just now going to go about a fraction of things. Josh Allen is 11 for 22, 50% conversion percentage. Michael Vick, 14 for 29, 48%. I bet. Jake Delahome, 15 of 32, 47%. What team do you play for? Damn. Jake Delahome. De- it's a D-L- D-E-L- D-E-L-H-O-M-M-E. Yes. Okay, I didn't okay. ask to spell. No, I needed to know who he was. Um, He played for... Who the hell? Did, the Titans? No. One more so, try. Not the clothes. Easy, 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 easy. Go ahead. Not the Titans. He did give you that hint. It is kind of close. The Texans? But not in no, a way you're thinking. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, he just went off the rails. I did? Okay, wait. Let me one more try. One more try. Is it in the AFC? No. no. It's in the yeah. NFC. It okay. Is. So, I don't know. Okay. They have a similarity with the Titans. Yes. There is a similarity. It's not something that you'd think of, but it's, it's, it is there. That correct. doesn't help. <laughs> just do yourself a favor. Look right. What do you see? Now assess. NFC. Bang. Oh. Ah. Did you play for Dallas? No. What is similar about Dallas in that? They have a black teammate. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, 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 wait. Um, nah, I'm cooked. <laughs> the Panthers. Ah, same, same color colors. scheme. Yeah, kind of sort. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. I was, I was the thinking of black. For the he was a quarterback for the Super Bowl when they faced the Patriots with oh, Steve Smith. Okay, that was yeah. dope. Right. So Ryan Tannehill, 19 for 43, 44 percent. Pam Manning, 22 for 51, 43 percent. Andrew Luck, 10 for 25, 40 percent. Tom Brady, 28 for 72, 39%. Matt Ryan, 24 for 62, 39%. Jared Goff, 12 of 32, 37%. This further proves why Peyton Manning clears Tom Brady. Joe Burrow, 73%. Yeah, you should, better respect him. That's crazy. You better respect him, man. That just debunks the whole dumb stat. Oh, he doesn't have a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Doesn't matter. No, man. that's a fact, though. He win doesn't pro- have a touchdown. Win probability over 50%, baby. Ah, big that's, what, guy. that's what matters. I thought you said winning, you yeah. know? That's what matters. What do you mean winning? He did win. He went to Super Bowl. Then winning not a QB stat. Didn't win at all, sadly. Oh it's not a QB stat. Okay. No, it's not a QB stat. But when you're down behind uh-huh. in that situation, that you could get credited with a situation like that. Win- winning is only a QB stat when the quarterback's good. Got it. Just so keep what that happens in if, mind. like, say for example, you you drive down right, like you, you did everything you needed to do. But then your kicker you misses a field goal, you lose. Is mm. that still like damn? Like what? Where did that happen to? I just want to ask, like, is that like the quarterback's fault or is, you know? It's not the quarterback's fault. So it's you, the kicker's fault. Got it, got it, got it. Just wanted to make that yeah. be clear. I don't think the stat takes into account that because it's win probability when the player leaves the field. So, so if you miss the field goal, you yes. win probability goes to zero. You're cooked. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it just takes into account what the quarterback did this week in the I NBA NFL, fellas. I have I one also. Too. I, we all gonna did say, our job. I'm going to say it before I lose it out of my brain. Um, it's actually me and, me and uh, Drew, we're back. We're, uh, we're back in the Jalen Green hype. Oh. Uh, we're, we're, we're so Twinsky. back. Jalen Green just won Western Conference Player of the Week. Who's the East Player of the Week? Jason Tatum. Derek White. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Was Jalen Green? I thought it was Anthony Davis. No, I'm thinking of last week. But, got it. They're on an eight-game win streak. Uh, Houston, the big USA today is the Rockets were smart to keep Jalen Green, but now they have a big decision to make. Jalen Green's been hooping. I think the difference between when he hoops in March and previous years is they actually have a chance to make the play in, which is interesting. Mm. It's fun and exciting. Coke. So They're playing right now. They are playing. He has uh, gonna say, nine points. I was going to say Jock Londale wow. scored 12 straight for them in the first Jeez. quarter. Yeah, Houston's been on fire. and uh, Jalen Green's been hooping a little different than before. Would you argue actually, two on fire? Mm, because somebody isn't playing? No, because someone's getting hawked in the standings. Right oh, I could care less if they don't want to make the playoffs. That's all now. All right, I respect that. He's 3 for 13 right now? Yeah, 3 for, yeah, three for 20. Jalen Green? Yeah. Let him cook up. He's kind of stinking it up, but, it's all right. you know, 18 minutes. We're here. Yeah, we're here. 3 for 12, 18 minutes, not good. But <laughs> 12 attempts already. Damn. <laughs> What's the score of the game right now? Shit. It's a four-point game, I think. 
Oh no, they're down six. I'll be honest, twelve it's attempts in eighteen laser. minutes is nuts. Fuck. I wish I had that. This is like. your fault for claiming Jalen Green Damn now. It. He had a stinker. You know, when you look at his his splits. Oh, Fred's two for 14 too. They're just having a bad night. Let's see what Scoot's doing. When you look at his splits for the year, month uh, by month. Uh, four through ten. Before the All Star break, Jalen Green was shooting thirty point seven percent from three. Post All Star, it's at forty percent. Amen. Five for ten. Four for ten for Scoot. Terrible. Even no. five for ten. We're here. We're here. You got to get to that fifty, man. Nine rebounds, two assists. We're here, man. He's, he's a really he's a, a demon on the boards, he's bro. A she's what the stuffer, fuck? bro. I love him to death. You know what's funny about Scoot is um, he is getting the Darius Garland first year yeah. point guard treatment. I don't know how fair it is completely to just be transparent with you. I do think that there was a lot of hype for him coming in that was. Not fair to him, honestly. Why? Because you had people saying that they should have traded Zion for him straight up or Jalen Brown. Brown. Yeah. Um, he was just in a category being talked about in somewhere that he didn't belong in yet. Mm. He's still a rookie. And the way he's looked in his rookie season, I think he's gotten progressively better throughout the year. But I, I think you you did expect more from him. He's been playing a little year. bit bad lately. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can give him time. You guys know Darius Garland's grandmother actually died a while ago? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Rest yeah, in peace somebody uh, made a post and it was like, uh, didn't know this. You know, I've been also at a little bit shitting on his game because he's been stinking it up a little mm-hmm. bit, too inconsistent. So somebody made this post. I woke up right in the morning. Cavs just got their ass whipped last night, a little aggravated. Three L's in a row. He, no, two. I thought it was three. Pers- I thought it was three. Doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. They're like a half uh, game back from the sixth seed, my man. Yeah, yeah, stop. Um, <laughs> they're injured. You know, if, if a team no loses Donovan, Tatum. No Donovan. What the fuck? He's hating. Even when Donovan was healthy, that brother was not playing well. They were winning, though. They, they just spanked winning. the Pelicans when he played. Like That's games. really all that mattered, though, for the Cavs. The you Cavs need the, you need the grab was playing. But um, I say that to say, uh, I was, you know, just on Twitter casually, and somebody was like, yeah, he's going through major uh, injuries. And also his grandmother died. And I was like, oh, shit, wow. I didn't, yeah. you know, losing a grandmother is tough. It is. That's unfortunate. So, uh. Yeah, I found the excuse. Price so that's for, this week in the NBA, the Jalen Green. Yeah, it's um, Jalen Green. Yeah, they were on a three-game losing streak, but they just smoked Charlotte, which is what they should have done. So oh, did okay. you guys share that this week in the NBA? Or no, you no, 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 no. That's just Twinsky. Um, my this week in the NBA is going to be centered around clutch buckets. Uh, right now, I want you guys to do me the favor. Name me the top 10 in terms of most field goals made in clutch time this season. Demar DeRozan. Yes, Steph Curry is number one, 54. DeMar DeRozan is number two, 48. Luka Doncic, not here. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, not here. Donovan Mitchell? Donovan Mitchell, not here. Let me go. Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams, not here. Here we go. Kobe White. Tatum. Jason Tatum, not here. SGA. Kobe White, not here. SGA is number seven with 33. That's weird because I, last time I checked, Jalen Williams had more points than SGA. In I think clutch. this is like, um, I think, because I, I retweeted this, so I know which one he's talking about. I just can't think of the I name. Have totals. Total yeah. field goals made in clutch time. Jalen uh, Brunson? Jalen Brunson, not here. There was, a, there was a few names up. He's so funny. I literally just retweeted I'm going to go like, with the two was... easy ones, just try to see which one maybe fits. Nikola Jokic or Jamal Murray? Nikola Jokic, number four, 38 field goals made. No, Jamal Murray. Uh, the only one. Uh, no, 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 Jamal Murray. Giannis. Giannis, not here. Kyrie De'Aaron Irving. Fox. De'Aaron Fox, number three. Kyrie Irving. With 43. Funny enough, I mentioned that because there's been a lot of shitting on De'Aaron Fox that he's not the same clutch time player. The efficiency may not be that great, but still, third most field goals made in the clutch. Uh, you said Kyrie Irving, yeah. not here. Damn. So How you, many? So you have number one. Have? You have number two. You have number three. Number four. Number seven. How many do we have left? Okay. Four or five. You, have num- you, need, you need to give me need number five, five number six, six eight, number nine, eight, nine, and ten. Got six. All right. Yeah, we're like halfway there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Oh, sure. my sure. God. You guys like just named a lot of names. No, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, a lot of these big wrong. name guys. Small. Um, Most definitely, there are some big name Zion. guys. Zion. Not here. Anthony Davis. Not here. Brandon LeBron Ingram. James. LeBron James is number six with 34 field goals made. I'm mid. Brandon Ingram is not here. Mid, he's coming well, for I mean, that clutch player of the, the year. Boy, none of them in would you say? It's like KD, but they're no. probably none of them right I'm now. Not say KD. Not here. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard is not Anthony here. Anthony Edwards. Not here. No. Anthony brother. Edwards, to be fair to you, is 11th ah. with 30 field goals made. Uh, who are we missing? Who are we missing? <laughs> 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 are 
Are you cheating, bro? It, I, looking, I, he, he I just look at He always sends the look. Yeah, yeah, he re- and then suddenly he's, he's just he blurting out, out yeah, good answers. Anthony Simons. Anthony Simons, not here. Wow. <laughs> Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, not look at, here. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he would have got <laughs> it. He would have been on the allegations. He would have been under allegations. I just bring up standings. Every time we do a trivia, I bring up standings. I look at teams. So we need number five, number eight, number nine, and number ten. Number eight and number nine are tied, so technically they're both eight. Tyrese? Not here. Trey Young? Tra- not here. Oh, goodness gracious. Such time buckets. Mm. You just said these are big time guys. Uh, You named the big time guy. There's one more big time guy, and then the rest of them are just really good ball players. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Some better Malik than Malik Monk. Bang, Ooh, number 10. Great, great job. That's a great point. Yes, ball, 31. Ball. That's a great yeah, once, you heard good, once you heard good, I'm like, yeah, yeah. we're going to cut. There's also another good player. Derek White? No. Sorry, bro. I was going to say that. He was? How many clutch games have you guys actually played? <laughs> a decent no, amount. Not bad. Oh, really? A decent amount. Okay. We're mm. one of the better records. Anthony in Simons was time. 18, by the way. Tyrese Halliburton was 16. You mentioned Kobe White, 16. Uh, Kevin Durant, 13. Giannis is also 13. The Bulls are actually one of the best clutch teams in the NBA this year. Kobe White and DeMar DeRozan? Yeah. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, number 20. Him too. Um, he always looks like he's right, doing something missing? bad. What? You're missing number five. This one's funny. Where's five? And if, uh, I said NFC. Nah, you got to guess this. Come on, guys. It's clutch Jalen Brown. Is, it's 30, not, not it's, 30, it's 30 teams, bro. You got this. East or West? You got, you got this. Bro. East <laughs> or West? Scotty Barnes. No, not here. Paolo Boncaro. He's number 11. So he's tied because you said yeah, Ant-Man you was need, 11. Yes, correct. Uh, you need number five, number Jaylen eight, sucks. Nine. Not here. Damn. DeJounte Murray. Not here. 13th. Good, good name, though. Yeah, 13th. Yeah. You've been giving me the ones that are just missing, Joel. Don't My feel God. too bad. Number five. I, you shouldn't be too upset if you don't get this. Trey Young? No, not I said here. him already, bro. This is a good name, right? This is a good player? Uh, Good player. Good player. Okay, okay, okay. There's also a great to slash elite player. Paul George? No. Just give me names. Come on. I'm going to go with Austin Reeves. No, good. I respect no, that. That's not no. a good guess. He's going to lie Sc- to uh, you. You guys said Scotty Barnes. He was 18th. Okay, okay. Siakam. Not here. Terrible name. Siakam was 23rd. Ah. Ah. Buddy Hield. No. Lori Marketing. <laughs> Horrible. The worst <laughs> guess by far. No, no, Lori. Devin Booker? Nope. Hmm. Only one of the sons snuck in. Okay. Dante DiVincenzo. No, but I, I like where your head's at. I like where your okay. head's at. Okay. Kale okay. Bridges. Ew, really? Number five. You said great. I, no, I did not. You said I great said to good. elite at I five. Said he said no, great I didn't. To elite at no, five. I didn't. He said one of them that's left yes. is good. Yes. My fault. One, one of them is good. Is one of them elite. is great to elite. Okay, so now we have that still. One and great then to elite. The, there's, so you have two names left. These are uh-huh. both tied for eight. One of them is great to elite. Okay. okay. The other. Cade Cunningham. No. <laughs> <laughs> the other can be considered great. Okay. Can Benyama? be considered great. No. Fred Van Vliet? LaMelo Ball. No. LaMelo hasn't played this yeah, He really has not played this year at all. <laughs> yeah, we're just guessing. Here we go. Great to elite. Don't think too hard. Don't tell us. Okay. You meant you said Jalen Brown already? I did. Yeah. Not him. It's no Celtic. No Celtic. Tyrese Halliburton. No shot. No. Tyrese Halliburton was number 16. Is that Dame? Bang. Oh, Jesus Christ. Great to elite player. That's him. That's the great to elite. It's surprising he's up there. Mm -hmm. Um, He's number, he's tied eight with this other player at 32 field goals made. So these are the two good players. Correct. Well, this, no, eight right here can be considered good to great. Okay. Tyrese Maxey? No. Good to great. Good to great. And I'm not giving hints. (laughs) You guys can figure this one out. Desmond Bam. Bam. No, no. He missed too many games, but I understand where your head's at. Bam also no, sadly. Mm. Jalen Brunson's 20th for those that are, are wondering. Devin Booker was 28th. But he healed 31. Not bad. All right. That's not the worst guess. 21 off. Yeah. Hmm. What conference? Oh, God, come on. I'm not trying to give hints. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to think. Let me think. Uh, you got to give us a hint that's not just good to great play. All right. It's a lot. Done. This is going to give it away. No, just east or west? West. Okay. Hella team still. Norman Powell. No. <laughs> uh, MPJ? No. CJ McCollum? No. That's a good guess. Sabonis? Herb Jones? No. no. Ah! Sabonis, no. Hmm. You said CJ already, right? 
Yeah, yeah I just did. Yeah. I think, like, I feel like I know, but I don't know. Kyrie, you said Kyrie? I said no, Kyrie. 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 I'm trying to think of the teams. Great. Right. Was it? Mm-hmm. Shangun? Let's fucking go. Wow. He fell off. You fell off. That's a rough <laughs> You fell off. I was going to name him too. All right. So the top 10 in terms of field goals made in total this season so far. Steph Curry at number one. DeMar DeRozan, number two. Number three, De'Aaron Fox. Nikola Jokic at four. Number five, Mikhail Bridges. Number six, LeBron James. Number seven, SGA. Eight, Alperen Shangun. Also tied with him at number eight, Damian Lillard. And number 10, Malik Monk. You guys fell off. I'll I cooked good. up at the end. The first seven was all y'all. And I you got did. like you That's because he just got hurt, so I, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. He's my, tied with, uh, sorry, Lillard at 32. Go ahead. My this week in the NFL, free agency is basically over, but we do have some players out there who are still free agents. Yep. So I want you guys to give me your ideal landing spot for oh, these remaining the free agents. <laughs> first name, Odell Beckham. Where would you like to see him play in 2024? Miami. Get him in Miami. I'm so serious. Put him in the slot right next to Tyreek and Waddle. I would be fun. say Kansas City. Okay, that's like another. That. That's a solid answer. Uh, Jacksonville, just I'll because they need a weapon. With the Chargers. With anyone desperately. Okay. Yeah. What about um, at one time one of the best receivers in the NFL? Unfortunately, not anymore. Michael Thomas. Still something left in the tank. Denver. Okay. I like Reunite the night with Sean Payton. I'm gonna go like with that. Denver. I'm gonna go with Denver too. Denver. Tyler Boyd. This one actually screams Chargers to me. This one, I think, is a Chargers destination. Honestly, wouldn't be crazy to see uh, the Chiefs go out and make that type of move also. I'm going to say Chicago. I feel like it would be a solid spot for him. A Tyler Boyd. Need a third guy. I'm thinking about Jets teams Tyler with Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Okay. I'm going to go Jet. with the New York Jets. Okay, cool. I'm going with the Jets. This is a player of surprise, still a free agent. Justin Simmons. Green Bay Phillies. Packers. Badly, I think Philly, Philly would be. Yeah, I oh think Philly God. is they the good. Del, don't let don't let him come in here, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't let it happen, Delves. Don't. <sighs> Stephon Gilmore, Philly retired, retired, Crying. out the league. <laughs> now nah, I still think he has some ball Philly. left in him. Philly's not a bad answer. He's all the I just don't get. know. He's better than Ringo. Um. Hmm. Shit, if he's better than Bradbury last it's year. Is Commander's crazy? No, I think he'd go anywhere has a job for him. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Tannehill. Probably the best quarterback Ooh, remaining. Denver. Denver Broncos. Yep. Denver. That does or, feel like a good or spot the Saints. for him. Saints, I like that too. Okay, that's a good one, right? Really. Yeah. Uh, last name, your Back guy. up for the Jets. We just we we signed Tyrod. I forgot about yep. that. T-Mobile, um, respect him. J.K. Dobbins, still out there. Mm. This is any team for me. Just get that brother a uniform. He has to stay healthy. Yeah. Hmm. What's a good what? spot for him, though? I'm going to go with the like Cowboys. A, a team that could use an RB2. I like the Cowboys. Take Minnesota. a flyer on him. Minnesota could use an RB2. Minnesota. Uh, I really like that, actually. Dallas is a really good location. I like that, too. What are they going to do? Those are all the names I had. Yeah, no more. Just five. Seven. I didn't hear seven. There were okay. Odell, MT, Tyler Boyd, Justin Simmons, Gilmore, JK. Ryan that went by fast as hell. You could have got three more. There's not a ton of free shots, I'll be honest. <laughs> Could have made it to My this Jada week Clowney. in the NFL. It's going to the Jets. It's already settled. So. Oh, got it, got it, got it. The NFL banned hip drop tackling. Uh, this led to a big uproar amongst Huge NFL uproar. defensive players. They don't like the rule. Uh, J.J. Watt criticized it. Uh, Kenyon Drake recently came out, an offensive player, and said this was the right rule. Uh, I think that, uh, of course, defenders are not going to be happy about it. It's one less, one less way to tackle somebody. But, I mean, this tackle did lead to a lot of injuries, and I don't think it's going to affect the game like people think it's going to affect it. People are being way too overreactionary saying that now we're playing two-hand touch, there's no hitting in football no more. This is, to me, similar to the horse collar tackle, to be honest. When you we talk about a hip drop tackle, it's uh, by the rule book, it's when a defender puts both arms or hands on the offensive player and then drops his entire weight and then lands on that player's legs. And, mm-hmm. of course, that's a dangerous play. Uh, I don't have too big of an issue with it. I think by the NFL committee did numbers on it, and one of 1,900 tackles on a weekly basis in the NFL were hip drop tackles or classified as hip drop tackles. That's 0.05%, which means that this flag that comes in next year 
I don't feel like it's going to be left Every and right. Mm -hmm. a, a ton of flags coming in, hip drop tackle. It doesn't happen as often as people think that it does. So I, I think that's not going to take away from the game too much. And if we can protect offensive players better, I think that's a good thing for the game and a good thing to make it safer. I think there is a fine line. Uh, so we have to see what the gray area is going to be. And it's definitely going to be brought to light more if the call is made during a crucial part yeah. of the game. You know, it's funny. I got the alert on my phone saying that there was changes made to, to the rules. And why was it my immediate thought that the tush push got banned? They're keeping but, it for one yeah, more year. I, I thought that that was funny. That, Did they that change was my the kickoff thought. rule? I saw they were flirting with something, but I don't know if anything ever passed. The I only, saw that uh, if, it, if, the, if the kickoff goes like through the air out of the end zone, the ball be put on the 30. But if I guess if you catch it in the end zone, twenty five. Uh -huh. Okay, interesting. Um, but the hit drop tackle, I'm always pro offense in that regard. I hate seeing injuries, and of course, uh, maybe that stems from my my love for fantasy football. But it really did suck to see Mark Andrews go out in that fashion, one of the game's best tight ends. And I feel like every time we talk about the hit drop tackle, that's one of the first plays that's being shown. But you mentioned it. It it's a, a, a tackle that rarely happens, but in moments that it does, we do see some of the worst injuries that this game has because of it. So I'm cool with it, but I also understand what people are saying. There's been a lot of adjustments to the ways that defenders can make plays on the ball, and that's 100% sound. That That is a very fair statement to make, but the whole point of this is for these players to have longevity and, and, and have lives after football uh, where – we, we've seen some some terrible situations because of how dangerous football can be. And this is just one more way to eliminate uh, injuries in, in the game that we love. So I'm 100% I'm on board with, with safety in that regard. What do you think the uh, penalty movement's going to be? Personal yards. foul. Personal yards. Oh, it's no, 15. No, no, I know that. But I'm saying horse, like holding, boom, offsides, boom. The what's, what's the hip tackle going to be? Hip. You're going to go like this? I don't know. It could be that. <laughs> Hug their hips. What if they just move Do the, the Macarena? Or they shake their ass. You guys see uh, Malik Beasley celebration guy in the college the other day? Huh? He shot it. And, and he, he left his <laughs> Yeah. That was tough. We were watching all that on playback, weren't we? The Bucks game? No, it happened in a college game. But I thought you said Malik Beasley. No, Malik Beasley did it, uh, but it got to so somebody did it in a college thing, during the tournament. And he got a uh, he got to eat or he no, was they let they let that shit go. Fire, <laughs> yeah, I'm here. shocked. It's it's the tournament. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Tournament's been good, man. Tournament's been good to watch. Our next topic, uh, this was a topic that was influenced by LeBron James and JJ Reddick's podcast, The Mind Game. LeBron talked about uh, mind influential the players. That's what I said, Mind the Game. Oh, said sorry. Mind the game. I heard Mind yeah. Game. Mind the Game. Mind Game? You heard he Mind that. Game. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay, sure. I said Mind the Game. No, no, no. Uh, we, we, heard it, brother, but we move mind on. Mind the Game. There we go. Um, Great intro. LeBron James listed Allen Iverson, Steph Curry as the most influential players in basketball. So what we're going to do now is give our Mount Rushmore for the most influential players and in how the game is played today. Mm. Okay. Uh, Ray, if I could start off with you, your Mount Rushmore. Uh, when you look at the Mount Rushmore, it's four people. So I did four people. I don't oh, know which I did. Did y'all do two, three? Of course did we did four. four. Okay, Mount good. Rushmore. I'm just making well, sure. The, what kind of world do we live in nowadays? I'm just making sure. So I think this question is really difficult. Because I think... Are we going to say, like, which one's Abe Lincoln, which one's George Washington? We're definitely that, not doing that because I don't even know half the dudes on Mount Rushmore. Come on, bro. You I, know you half. I know Washington. I know Lincoln. Cook. Maybe Adams. <laughs> no. I didn't cook. Thomas Jefferson. He's one. Who's the last one? Arguably the best president we've ever had, not named Abraham Lincoln. Barack Obama. Respect I, that I have answer, to say that. no. Way before his time. Yeah. Way before. <laughs> like 40s. <laughs> Roosevelt? Bang. All right. You which, don't fall. You're good. Crazy. Franklin? FDR. Uh, uh, yeah. Frank, FDR, FDR yeah. Franklin. Yeah. Franklin. Franklin, okay. Franklin, Delano, Roosevelt. Oh, so maybe I did know that. Okay, it's cool. Um, regardless, don't really care for those guys. I'm locked in on the NBA right now. Just okay. focusing on the they NBA got at the moment. The they got nothing on Barack Obama. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> respect to my brother in Christ. Um, I think this question is indeed hard because I think it depends on which era you grew up in. I do genuinely believe. Same thing with how I feel with music. I think music is so influential, and I think it. You know, certain rappers impact a guy, a some somebody specific life, specific life during their time. Like I think for us, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Drake, those are the guys we consider the most influential people back in the day that are older than us. Jay Z, Nas, those are their guys. So mm -hmm. I think for the NBA, that kind of have the similarities. I do think like guys for us are a little different than guys for back in the day. But I do think like for me, the four Mount Rushmores. If I had to keep it condensed into just a global NBA scale, I think MJ would be up there. You know, I think Allen Iverson is up there. 
for me, I went Steph Curry, of course. And then I went LeBron James. You know, I think those four guys are the most influential for me. I, I, I just, I had to. I think MJ, for what he did for just the NBA in the 80s. Like, I think... It's, and it's hard. People are going to put Bird and Magic, but I think it's hard to keep one off without putting the other. I think they're kind of a together thing because they both, you know, from college to the NBA, they were rivals. They pretty much brought uh, back to, uh, the game. But for MJ, just what he did with the Jordan brand, for, sure. for sneakers, you know, what he did for uh, the NBA globally, how he just put basketball back on the map, you know. And then Allen Iverson, for me, just what he did with his swag, how he brought back that 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 authentic style to the game, how he didn't let nobody just change his style and who he was. And then, of course, Steph Curry with just the, the landscape of how basketball is, how kids nowadays look up to him and how kids nowadays change the game. Where You don't have to be 6'8", 6'9", all the time. You could be that small little point guard. Then, of course, the three-point variance. You obviously lead that to Steph Curry. And then LeBron James, just from the business standpoint of it, just from the off-basketball standpoint, just from the, the mindset of how he just carries himself, the people he keeps around him, how he's built a school, like just the way he, you know, he's, you know, talked outside of basketball, talked about politics, like just him as his movement. Like he he has that type of movement that like is just far superior to anybody in the NBA. MJ kind of had it too, but he didn't really talk about stuff outside of basketball. He kind of keeps a private of life with LeBron, you know, especially with the media, how the media is today and the way he's been able to keep a clean, squeaky life while still being involved in politics, still being involved in social stuff, like him just being involved in everything he can be while building a school, you know, being damn near a billionaire, you know, building these businesses. And now, you know, having a podcast, which was probably the most articulate conversation I've ever watched like just in a basketball room ever. Like the way him and JJ were dissecting the game and talking about plays and just talking about the game was just like a great thing to watch. That's something you really got to sit down and watch. Like I tried to watch that shit at school, couldn't do it. Like I really had to go in the booth in. and like lock in and really watch. But for me, you know, that's those are the four guys. And, and like, you know, there's obviously the personal guys you like. Like Derek Rose for me is the guy that influenced me the most in just watching the game. Like you have your influences the most, but I tried to keep it as condensed as possible, because you can go on. You can bring up Dirk. You know, Canadians, they can bring up Steve Nash, because, you know, for them, that would be the guy. Hakeem Olajuwon, that would be the guy. Giannis for Greek, like, for the Greek, uh, for Greece, pardon me. That would be their guy. So, like, it's so many guys, but for me, I think those would be the four. Okay, I think that's fair. Uh, Steph and AI most definitely have to be on here. I just whispered over to Joel that I'm a fake fan because I don't have LeBron on here. Uh, the question was, influenced how the NBA is played today. So there's multiple aspects to that. And Riv, I think you articulated yourself extremely well when you spoke about LeBron. Uh, and especially, of course, Allen Iverson and, and what he meant to how people just in the NBA just are unapologetically themselves. And AI kind of brought that back to the NBA. Steph Curry is obvious with the three-point revolution. I still have to respect Michael Jordan playing above the rim, being that high flyer, that athletic guard. He's one of those that you still see his type of model or tried to tried to be replicated years after he's been gone from the league. Last person I have on my list, I don't have LeBron James. I have Dirk Nowitzki. I, I have this as a guy who comes from overseas. This is one of the first real big men that could stretch the floor. And now I feel like when we talk about the Dirk Nowitzki style of player, the first player that gets brought up is Kevin Durant because he has the size. He has the ball handle. But before Kevin Durant... It was Dirk Nowitzki. So to me, I have Dirk here, and that's not a, a slight to Kevin Durant, obviously. I, I look at Kevin Durant, just some pure offensive talent. I mean, he's one of one, but Dirk Nowitzki was really one of those, one of the more influential players that now to this day, there is no there is no team that does not have a four that can stretch, and definitely no team that doesn't have a five that can at least space the floor a little bit. A lot of that did start with Dirk Nowitzki doing it at such a high level. So to me, I put him at my four spot. My four. Um, so I have one I don't think you guys have mentioned yet. Uh, Steph Curry, I think it's going to be in all of ours. If you're looking at how the game is played today, it's impossible not to have this conversation uh, with Steph Curry, he's been uh, he's been on a great run. Unfortunately, he might miss the playoffs this season. That'd be unfortunate <laughs> man, for for what a go. Um, Steph Curry be one. It's not his fault, man. What missing playoffs? Oh no, no, he's having a sensational season. Steve Kerr is back to being a terrorist. Yeah, he's always been that. <laughs> You've man. been going through hell on Twitter. I've been seeing he's that. Just it's something wrong with him, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would also have Allen Iverson on my list. Um, just what he did in terms of his stature, being you know six foot six one, the the ability to play. Um, with with the pace and the swag and everything he brought to the game, he's I know, real aura. I know we're talking about on the court too, but.
but it's just impossible to ignore the off the court stuff oh, yeah. he brought, just like his style and just like his confidence level and everything else that I mean, player after player that comes through, even today, like you have players who are younger than us or even our age who are referencing Allen Iverson and they probably weren't even born when the time he was really in the peak of his powers. Um, I would have LeBron James on this list Respect undoubtedly. That. Um again, maybe I I'm taking this too much off the court, but all of these stars lining up to play together on the court, it happened before LeBron. Sure, like there was some player movement and stuff, but what LeBron did for player movement, it changed the entire landscape of there. the NBA. Fair I enough. mean, look at if you look at really all of the top dogs in the NBA over the past decade, 15 plus years, when he made that move to Miami, all of the trades, all of the free agency decisions, you have to go back to LeBron James and that affects on the court. Um, but I think my fourth, if we're talking about how the NBA is played on the court today, it's James Harden. You know, James Harden in this heliocentric, iso-heavy ISO heavy type of offense that he's been playing, um, that's not transcended the game, but it's a big part of today's Ruined game. Basketball. When you, when you, I wouldn't say that far. When you look at guys like Luka Doncic, uh, you know, that get compared to James Harden, and there might be some sort of like a negative aspect to it because, like you mentioned, first thing you said, ruined basketball. Um, I know you're saying that jokingly, mm -hmm. but it does kind of have a negative connotation to it because – when you are so heavily utilized and your usage rate is so high and you put up all of these numbers, but unfortunately for James Harden, wasn't able to win that championship, it gets frowned upon. But if Luka is able to play this style and win a championship, I think the whole as or the whole way we view kind of this heliocentric offense is going to change. And he has the talent to do it. They have a, a decent enough team to go on a run. It's going to be tough to beat a team like Denver or, or the Celtics in a seven-game series. Um, but yeah, I would have AI, Steph, LeBron, and James Harden. My NBA Mount Rushmore is off of the what players do I see the most in the way that the games play today? So what NBA players had the most influence on the game of basketball that I'm watching every every other night? Steph Curry's number one. The spacing, evolution, pace and space, three point shooting, the volume of three point shooting, it starts with him. There's no doubt about it. Allen Iverson, you guys have all mentioned Allen Iverson as a ball handler. Yep. The way that every guard nowadays nowadays has emulated how he played. The crossover, the creativeness with the basketball in their hands. Kyrie Irving is an evolution of what Allen Iverson was no doubt. and what that era was in basketball because that was around the time of and one. Stephon Marbury was very popular. Steve Francis. All those creative ball handlers, I think, have led us to where we are now with the amount of guards that are just creative with the basketball. James Harden is number three for me. You cannot watch a great isolation player in today's game that has no shade of James Harden. Every great isolation player today is mimicking James Harden, whether it's a step back, you look at Jason Tatum, he's kind of patenting his side step three. That's an evolution from the step back that James Harden popularized get into the free throw line, the efficient style of play where you only get to the basket, you only shoot threes, you only go to the free throw line, foul baiting, which every NBA superstar does. I mean, James Harden, for the negatives of it, you know, everybody criticized him for doing it. That has now become popularizing. They even had to put a rule in place to try to stop it. So when I look at a player that's an influenced game and how it's played, especially in isolation, it's James Harden. And I feel like this is one of the more isolation heavy eras. And number four, I went back and forth on this because I think Dirk Nowitzki was a great answer. But when I look at Dirk Nowitzki, I'm kind of torn between his influence on European players or his influence on tall shooting players like Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. But Kevin Durant wasn't the first forward that can handle and shoot the ball. Tracy McGrady was. Mm. You know, Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, those guys, they came in first. So I can't really say that KD more so evolutionized the position because... Could you say Scotty Pippen did? You could say that because every forward now is handling a ball that's a star player. There's no doubt about it. They're trying to play like KD. But KD, what him and Dirk have is something that not a lot of players have and can emulate. You know, not everybody's seven foot and can move like KD and, and Dirk shoot like both yeah, of these guys. Exactly. And Dirk Nowitzki, like even before him, you had like the Ralph Sampson's. So they, those big guys that can shoot existed, but Dirk, I feel like had the influence on the European game where once he came in and had success, it opened up the floodgates for more teams to take chances on Europeans. So number four for me was Sha Shaquille O'Neal. I think Shaq, 
the reason why we have defensive three seconds in place today is because of Shaq, because he was so dominant in the paint, and they had to come up with a rule to try to stop him from being in the paint all the time. Mm. And that rule in itself has led to the pace and space era where the lane is wide open. And that's because big men can't camp inside there, and that's in direct correlation to Shaquille O'Neal and the rule that was put in place. So that's my big four. I love that you mentioned James Harden because I feel like a lot of people forget about James Harden. I don't know if he's going to win a championship or not. Who knows with the Clippers? But the way he has influenced the game, I think gets overlooked too much. I just like the fact that we all have like somebody different. Like you had Dirk, you got you had James Harden, you had Shaq, I had LeBron. Like everybody had a like a, a fourth guy that was kind of different than the rest. You know, and I think like like I mentioned before, I think the fact that you know you mentioned like Dell's mentioned James Harden because he's like he's mentioned he's not a big fan of the the before basketball he's a big fan of now basketball so Harden would be in his list same with like you think Shaq like you having somebody different because of the way he changed the game like everybody like even kids now I know you guys seen it on TikTok a lot of kids right now are influenced by Paul George like they love oh the way God, he played sure. like every young player coming up their favorite player is Paul Look, George you just they, gave me goosebumps that's they, one of they, these guys probably should yeah, be on they want to play so it's like now you but think that's like a KD. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, that was our kid. Like ours yeah. was KD. Now mm -hmm. the kids coming up, Paul George. Like that, it's gonna be Ant Man soon. Like we had D Wade. Like it's gonna be a whole new generation of guys saying, like we already got him now. Brandon Miller, my favorite player of all time is Paul George. That's the goat to me. So it's like mm -hmm. we're gonna have that coming up now, where we're gonna have different guys like Donovan Mitchell, PG guys saying like that. So I'm I'm definitely excited to see the influence coming up because you know. LeBron's going to be gone soon. Steph, Kevin Durant, Harden, Kawhi, like all these guys, they're not going to be here forever. So, you know, you need that next batch of guys. You know, Shaq didn't even enter my matrix, but once you explain the whole three-second rule, that definitely makes 1,000% sense. It's just we haven't seen another Shaq in terms of Probably the sheer. never. Like the closest I think we've gone to Shaq, which is still so far away, still Giannis, yep. and I guess on a smaller level, Zion. Zion. That's it. Where yeah. I look at Zion more so that type because that's really his game, just straight bully my way into the paint. Of course, Giannis is the same way. It's still freakish size. But, again, we just have not seen another Shaq, and I still don't think we will ever see one, too. you think there's a player in today's game that could enter this type of uh, Mount Rushmore? Or maybe Wemby? The seven-foot. I mean, KD was seven-foot who could handle, too. But. I feel like I have to remove Wemby by default just because he's so a unicorn. Un yeah. Just a regular. We haven't seen one of these guys like this before. That can move like this, handle the ball like this, shoot like this. I don't even know, like, cause you gotta think, like, so let's let's say hypothetically, like, we all from from my understanding, we all Wait. had MJ, Steph, AI, Nikola right? Nikola Jokic, and this, Jokic. But this he's is, had a big. But this I didn't why. have MJ. I won't, well, let's say MJ, Steph, LeBron, right? Let's just add those three. Those are the guys. Mm -hmm. The reason why, well, one of the reasons why they're also influential is those are also one of the goats. Like yeah, those, yeah, those yeah, are the for goats. Sure. Like the Joker. He's probably going to be one of the goats, but he's not going to have the the cultural impact that those guys have. He's not going to have the sneaker brand. Just off style of play. That's the reason why I say but Jokic. The, we even, see the influence with him in college basketball. Yeah. But he, but he, with the Joker, you still you've seen shades of him before, like a little bit in Tim Duncan, Hakeem, like a little bit in Dirk, like uh -huh. you still seen shade him with like Sabonis a little bit, like the old Sabonis. Like you still seen shades of him from time to time. He's just like the complete package yeah, yeah, yeah. that of all of those guys put together. You know, just from an offensive standpoint. I know what you're saying. Who's the center before Jokic that ran an offense? Probably Hakeem. Would it be the ran one? an offense? Yeah, I'm I talking think... about like he was the hub, the the passer, the decision maker. Hmm. Of the offense. I wouldn't say. I think passer, Tim Duncan. I would say passer. Okay, I think score, Tim, Tim like is in the a post, good answer. Hakeem. Um, we, shooting. I'm going to say, am I allowed probably, to say Dirk? No, probably not the passer. Because I think Jokic already is having an impact on uh, the way offenses are being ran through centers. In college, yeah. UConn runs their offense through Klingon. Yeah. He's a hub in, in their offensive system. Sabonis was in a hub and an offense until Jokic for sure was an MVP really when he got to the Kings. Shangun, you know, Shangun has become a hub for the Rockets offense. Feel you? Listen, even to a lesser extent, Bam Adebayo, I feel like the, one of the more underrated aspects of his game is his playmaking. I feel like that started to to transition to that again once we started to see the big men like Jokic, like Sabonis, really take off in that regard. I don't know. I think it's hard to like Arvidas Sabonis, his pops. That's his pops. Yeah, I was going to say, wasn't he one of those guys He's also of, that he, was a great he, passer? He just didn't have the uh, volume. Mm -hmm. He just came into the NBA like 36. Yeah, he was old. Yeah. I just don't think, I, I don't want to say this wrong. Like I, don't, like, I don't think 
a European can come over and like just have that like Mount Rushmore like impact like out aside from Dirk because mm-hmm. I think when Dirk came you don't over, think Wemby can? I don't I don't know to be honest. Maybe because I, he's such a unicorn, yeah, and he's different. Like I guess you get that once in a generation, and Wemby would be the next guy up. But even like the Joker, two time MVP, he's still not the most popular in the league. But nah. you see Wemby already with the Louis Vuitton. I mean, he has the. <laughs> but there, that's them like also promoting. Wemby as much as him being who he is like the NBA is collectively pushing this guy alongside of also him being a unicorn I don't think the NBA really tries to push the Joker too much you know until he started he, d- he, want, he doesn't, he doesn't want yeah, he also he doesn't, doesn't want, want it like you, yeah. you gotta want it too like he's not gonna have the sneakers the name brand he's not gonna have the swaggy no he's gonna go to a horse thing or just chill and well, be with and his family to be fair though Giannis is pretty pushed on top of he his personality to, yeah, yeah. but he, I, he, I don't think he'll ever I don't know. Giannis is just no offense to me. He's just too corny. <laughs> His jokes ain't be. You know, you people love like, Giannis though. I was gonna Even say people, people, do. LeBron, think so, think people corny, look at LeBron and say LeBron's corny. It's like, but like, LeBron is LeBron. Yeah. I know, of course. Like you got to think. I Gian- understand, but Giannis the, also is the one Joker, of the most dominant the, players. The Joker and Giannis seen. best players in the league. So, brother yeah. man. But even the still, news? what news? Uh, you ain't here yet. What? Did you check your phone. The the Celtics blew a thirty point lead to the Hawks. Oh yeah, I saw that. Thirty. Let's go. Nasty. Um, the Joker and Giannis the today, are the, are are the um, best players in the league. But who's still the, the most popular players in the league? Like a yeah, for sure. Ass. Still the staffs, the LeBron. <laughs> Giannis is still one of the most popular players in the league, though. Yeah, but it's like, you see, like, even in the numbers, like, LeBron and Steph, like, just still to this day. But not really, because he wasn't even voted to be in the All-Star game to start. No. Nah. To start. Giannis I, nah. had the most votes by far, if I'm, I'm just not talking mistaken. money wise, though, like ratings, uh-huh. jersey sales. Like I'm just going off player and like and just terms of yeah, SGA is a new, he's a not mm-hmm. the not to us, mm-hmm. but to mm-hmm. casually, he's the new shiny toy in the block, of course. Or what about again? Giannis led all guys in votes. I thought LeBron did this year. LeBron Giannis. got passed. I hate that for him, truly. I don't. I love that they're embracing the young guys. Giannis, Giannis is what thirty? Twenty? Is he thirty? I thought twenty eight, twenty nine. Ooh. He's getting old. He is getting old. I think he's 28, though. I think he's the same age as Jokic, if I'm not mistaken. As it stands right now, the Rockets are about to beat the Blazers. They're 35 and 35. With this win, they'll be 36 and 35. They are only one game behind the Warriors, so now I think they'll be a half game back behind the Warriors. Something like that. Lakers, Warriors, ninth and 10th seed. Who's more likely to miss the play in Lakers, Warriors? Draymond Green was asked about the Rockets. We ain't worried about them. He said, about the I, I don't give a damn about the Rockets. That's what he said. I don't That's give a damn about rivalry. the Rockets. And listen, I understand that, you know, because you got to worry about your own team. So it's okay not to give a damn about the team that's behind you that's coming up. But the Rockets are playing really well. A favorable schedule for sure. But still, they're playing some really good basketball. But one of these teams have to drop off. And if it's between one of these teams, who's it going to be? I think we know what team it's going to be. The Lakers have Lakers have a little a cute little cute cushion, cute little cushion between the Lakers that nine are a better team. The Lakers they probably, are a better, they probably are along, a better team too. When I remember they, when you were on the Warriors wave. I respected it. I think I had the Warriors. Steph Curry got an ankle injury. Remember, oh. LeBron has had an ankle injury for weeks. How many games did Steph miss because of that injury mm-hmm. that he just had? Two or three. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Two or three. LeBron's not we lost all. But the Rockets <laughs> and Warriors. I don't know why he said that. We lost the, all. The Rockets and Warriors uh, play each other. We beat the week or so without LeBron. We beat the Bucks with Giannis. Without Steph? No, with Steph. Uh, that's what I was saying. We beat the Bucks without you LeBron. Me? You had AD still. I know. You still have somebody. Oh. <laughs> like, we lose Steph. What the fuck are we doing? Hey, bro. Running out Chris Paul. AirPods. No brother Chris Paul starts. I kid you Yo, not. Yo, Trace Jackson Davis. I love him. He's, no, he's open. He's a dog. Um, It's easily the Lakers. Wait, wait. What's the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's who's more likely to make it? No, no, no. Who's most oh, likely for oh, them to make it? It's the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, Houston's up 10 right now. He said yeah. no. They're oh, right, my, I thought you I said know. they're about to lose. My yeah, said no. they're about to win. Did the Jalen Green start to cook? It doesn't matter. The win is the win. Eight for twenty-four. Drew, we're focused on the win. He's got twenty-five. We're focused on the win. The win is <laughs> Thanks, the win. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Um, Eight for twenty-four. He kind of. It's that's garbage. Thirty-three percent. Um, the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> that's garbage. Eight for twenty-four is n- that's a tour. Dylan Brooks is one for eleven. He's not good. <laughs> you feel like it was disrespectful for Three Draymond to dismiss the Rockets like that? Yeah, I do. I do. But I feel like aiming six for twelve. We're here. That's fifty percent. He's the go. Yeah. Um. I feel like Draymond be tripping, and I and I think to just discount a team that's literally on your ass right now, like they're they're hovering, they're trailing. Like, and you mentioned the Rockets having a favorable schedule. So did the Warriors. Like oh, the Warriors have had a pretty solid schedule. You just lost a couple good, like good home games, you know. And I and I don't think 
right now you can even pick the Warriors. Like they went from being one of the hottest teams in the league to now being one of the you know weakest teams in the league pretty fast. Um, it went from you know Steph Curry being injured, you know, to then he coming back, you know, Kerr not realizing that this team like not making adjustments, then this team not having a center, you know, Draymond at the five. It's cool for the playoffs and stretches throughout the year. But, bro, he's like 32, 33 years old. You know, that's a lot of mileage on the body. You know, you're small. You're in the West. There's a lot of big teams. Excuse me. So I don't I don't even think, like, we're two game, we're two and a half behind the Lakers. In a playing game, who would I take? I would take the Warriors on, a, sure. on just a one-game thing. But right now, with the way the Warriors are playing, they're not connected. You know, Steve Kerr did some bullshit the other day. Let me tell you what he did against, <laughs> against the Timberwolves, actually. So let me tell you what he did against the no, Pacers was, first. Okay. Um, so Steph, heater. It's the Pacers. Everybody is on the heater, right? Steph's on the heater. That's about 13 points. Doing what he does. So Steve Kerr decides, my best player is hot. You know what I'm going to do? Bench him. Out. Take him out the fucking <laughs> game. And he takes him out the game. Andrew Wiggins is also playing fairly well that game. So you know what he does? Eh, don't, doesn't matter. Takes him out the game. Pacers going to run. Then they come out in the second half, get blitzed. Then you have the Minnesota game. It's on the road. You're playing well. You're up 13, as a matter of fact. Don't know why he's doing that because Kerr always strikes, not the other team, but Steve Kerr strikes again. Guess what he does? So Steph Curry... Has all of a sudden has this new rotation lineup thing now where he comes out at the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Doesn't come back in until six, ding, 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 six. the six-minute mark in the fourth quarter. They're down 6-7, so now what does Steph have to do? Old man has to come in here, will them to a W, and with, with like the Warriors, you know what they're going to run. Like You know every set they're going to run every play instead of just like other teams like for example minnesota putting the ball in a man's hands let him work instead of doing that when you still have like a top six player in the world no let me run a play for clay thompson no let me <laughs> run a play for jonathan Kaminga. let me try to figure this out no just give him the ball find a favorable matchup let steph cook but steve kurt doesn't do that he plays our best player 29 minutes uh it's pretty nasty i don't think these guys want to make the playoffs. They don't have their picks. I don't know why they wouldn't want to make the Should playoffs. Hours, yeah, it's it's actually insane. I don't know what KP. they're going to do. True, but yeah. yeah. Like same I don't, I don't know what they're going to do in the offseason, but you're kind of like, they have been doing this thing where they've been trying to commit to winning a championship and commit to the rebuild at the same time. And I don't think I've ever heard of a team that tries to do that when you have a top five player in the world on your team. Like, I, I don't think a Lakers team has tried to do that with LeBron. Boston has never tried to do that. Shit, even the, the, the low-end teams, even the Kings ain't trying to do that. Like, they're just committed to being competitive. Like, this team is literally not fully committed to just, we have Steph. Steph is aging, but he's still playing at an amazing level. Why not try to put the best team around him? Figure out that extra shit in the future. Like, figure out that shit when you need to figure it out. But right now, you still have Steph. You still have Draymond Green. Let's try to figure that out. They have not, you know, done that. And it's funny because as soon as they extended Steve Kerr, is when they started losing again. That's that's the whole ironic. Like that's Bro that's the whole funny part. Yeah, he, they started doing that. So I, like I don't know. I think the Warriors. Obviously, I trust the Lakers more right now. Like the Warriors at this point, I get mad when they come on the TV because it's like it's the same shit over and over again. They're a team that's blown the most leads this year. They're a team that's been in the most clutch games, and they have lost most of them this year. Like this is a team that against the top six, you look at the record. It's like one and three against the OKC, like zero and four against the Nuggets, and a lot of those games that they played against the top West teams, they've blown leads like Sacramento, Denver, like OKC. They've blown legit <clears throat> leads to these teams where this record looks a lot better if this team looked a lot more disciplined. So for me, I, like I don't see a world unless Steph Curry does what he needs to do, which I think he can do and backpack. But I've seen him have fifty and we still lose the game, which is in the John St. Murray kills us in the clutch. I've seen that before. Like it's happened. Like this year. Like a couple months ago. So I've seen <laughs> I've seen Steph like go nuclear and we still like I don't think we're at this position. You like Everybody in the West has a number two guy. Shit, even OKC has a number two guy. The Lakers have a number two guy. The Kings got a number you two guy. You have a number two guy. No, we don't. And that's the problem. The problem is they don't have a consistent creator outside of Steph. And once you double Steph, put Steph in a the box, there is nothing you have to worry about with this team. You can only play two non-shooters for so long. He's 36 years old. So I do hope this offseason they get him some help. You know, I kind of feel like the Warriors are fine. Not in a basketball sense. I think, you know, you you might you might fall out the plan. Did you just hear how long he talked for? I did. Yeah, that's what you came I don't with? know if they're fine. This well, is the thing. Who's hurting? This is the thing with the Warriors. That doesn't sound fine to me. 
The Warriors have won four championships. Brother, brother, brother. All right, we're settling. Over. We're settling. It's not even just that. We're settling. But it's the we fact are. that it's you not even time, just brother. that. It's done. It's, it's also, you know, you're done with Steve Kerr, I'm assuming. Huh? You're done with Steve Brother, Kerr. he's on a two-year extension. I can't be done with it. He ain't getting fired. <laughs> we're here. I think Steve Kerr, he's been awful. He's been terrible. There's no doubt. Oh, you're bad. Dude. But when it comes to Golden State, to find the fine. they are kind of trapped because... Nothing sounds fine. Y- even this. though you got Steph Curry, you got to stay loyal to Clay and Draymond. Waiting for the punchline. You got to stay loyal for Clay. You got to stay loyal to Dre and, and, and um to Draymond Green and Clay Thompson. At as least Dre. That. At least Dre. He's not Draymond Green 100%. This Clay Thompson, just said, we're not worried about the Rockets. This is final year. Again, where are they fine? I, I want to hear him cook. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the where they're fine, that part. They're fine because... It is what it is. Like this is <laughs> this is how dynasties end. This is how oh. every dynasty ends. This is how every dynasty. Joel, ends. it didn't need to get like this. This is how it ends. No, 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 brother, brother. I get that part. Eventually, a dynasty ends. Nobody's asking them to go out there and win the twenty twenty four title. Nobody's even asking them to go out there and win the twenty. So let me ask title. you something. So you what, shouldn't be out the playoffs. So what's the best? What was the best scenario for the Warriors to get better this year? Get into the playoffs and give them a chance. No, I'm saying, how were they supposed to do that? I mean, how? they've been in position all season long. Now they're about to fall out of the 10th seed. I know, but like, what move were they supposed to make oh, that would have propelled them over? Moves, but also all the blown leads they've had this season. I, I don't Pascal even think, Siakam. like, outside, you can't have this many blown leads. Pascal Siakam is the name that comes up. That's the move. That would have been a move for the Warriors. I, mean, I agree, 100%. But who do you trade? Brother, anybody. It took, trade up it took three picks. Yes. It took three picks and Bruce Brown to get Pascal to the Pacers. You don't think you don't think three picks, Andrew Wiggins and Moody's getting the shit done? I think it gets it done. And Moody but don't I, even play. I know Moody doesn't play, but I also think that even if you guys had Pascal Siakam, I think this team is a second round exit. But that and that's all we're asking for. You see, this here's the thing. All you have to do is get Steph Curry in the you playoffs. Give him a he chance. Gets a chance. You exactly. give him a chance. That's it. You you trust in your top five player and you give him a chance every sure. single night in the playoffs. It's that's hard for. for any organization to consistently give their player who has stuck around for their organization so long a chance every single year. It I agree. Look, look across history. Outside of the Spurs with Tim Duncan in the past 20 years, who's done it? The Mavericks, when Dirk was on his final legs, they were, they were garbage. But he was not that good either. No, but after the 2011 championship, I don't think they won the first round playoff Was series. Dirk still a top five player, though? Dirk, after 2011, I think from 2011 to 2014, he was still a great player. But just because we haven't seen the past, does that mean that we should just shrug our shoulders and be like, well, it's I'm not saying you shrug our shoulders, but there's only so much you can do. They like, didn't even try, For, for example, they really with didn't. the Lakers... And LeBron James. LeBron James hasn't even been to the Lakers as long as a fraction of how long Steph Curry has been on the Warriors. And it even seems like the Lakers right now are running out of stalemate of how many the assets did, they're able to acquire. Like what the Lakers did last season at the trade deadline where shit wasn't going right. And they said, all right, let's shake up damn near half this rotation. It's hard when you have a dynamic that you have to stay loyal to. That's the, And that's the problem right there. I think, yes. I understand what you're saying. The sentiment of these guys brought you for NBA championships. You know, they've been together for this long. You've drafted all three of them. You brought in Steve Kerr. You've built a, a home and a family here. I understand that part. But as an organization, and first of all, organizations don't even stay loyal. So as an organization where if you want to continue to win, you want to continue around the guy that's been the main nucleus of all of this, I feel like you should still have some type of respect or some type of like loyalty to him first to where it, He's still playing at this level. Let's at minimum do our best on this end to make it competitive. They have not tried to make any real moves, at least even attempt to make a move. And on top of that, Steve, like Steve Kurt, like they not even th- th- this organization is so stubborn. They run in the same shit from 10 years ago. We are running the same <laughs> offense from 2016. What do we like? The game is changing. Teams are evolving. You had to know like uh, you were just going to not get better and just let Steph's career just waste over. I think championship may be too far. I do think maybe it's too far at this moment. But damn, let the brother compete in the playoffs for a couple more times. You just the if championship is too far, though, then it's like, why would you trade? Because I understand you brought up the Wiggins and the Moody pack just fine. We don't have the draft pick this year. But, like, if, if Kaminga was the guy that got sent, like, why would you trade Kaminga for a team that's going to lose in the second round 
when Kaminga could be the face well, he, of he what's going to happen after. Uh, is he really giving me the face of what happens after? He contract. could be a pivotal part he's, of it. His he contract is, he's, he has, you have to give him an extension. He, next could, he could be a piece, but I'd also rather have the better player right now with Steph Curry is, and then hope I could find someone that's the one next to Kaminga. Every team that wins a championship and ultimately they got older players that are timeline erodes, they go into a rebuild. It's just inevitable. The Celtics with Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen left the Celtics to go yep. to the Heat. They traded Paul Pierce and KG. That's what jump started they their got the rebuild. greatest trade ever. They did, but it's like if they if if they would have stayed loyal to their guys, they wouldn't have had that. And also, there was no way for them to really go up. So when you have a dynamic like the Warriors, where you have Steph, Clay, and Dre, three guys that you got to stay loyal to. Clay is the one that's fallen off, and he's now accepted a role off the bench, which is it, cool. It, it is very hard to just improve your team. And I feel like that's the dynamic the Warriors struggle with right now. The biggest reason why they're in this position is because they missed on their draft picks. It's really as simple as that. If they hit on their draft picks, they would be great for the next era. Uh, Jordan Poole, we thought he would be here, but he eventually gets traded. I just feel like a lot of things happen that didn't go the Warriors' way. And at this point, like any move they made or would have made would have been a panic move that doesn't raise a ceiling. Well, what's the ceiling of this team? Right now, the ceiling is playing. a first-round exit. And what's the exit. ceiling if they would have got Siakam? Second well, round? Well, the ceiling is not That's a plan. A the ceiling is like a first-round exit. Uh, but don't second you round still, exit. I still... Right now, your ceiling tough. right now is first-round exit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you might be reaching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know you could win In the play you could win a game. Exactly. Well, you need to win two. You got to win two uh, on the uh, road. Uh, and then round one, I have to face... Denver, maybe. Denver, Denver <laughs> or OKC or Minnesota. I don't know. I just feel like they could have did something. Like, I feel like if you're if your ceiling for me is top of the notch playing team to now second round, that's fine with me. Because if you can make the second round, a few games swing your yep. way and bada boom, like and I like Clay fell off, but also Clay is in the wrong role. Clay is not a secondary scorer anymore. That's just not what he is anymore. Yep. Like, he's not that. Like it, it, it's just it is what it is. You know the mileage is caught up on him. He is more on just that Ray Allen vibe back when he was in like Miami, Miami and stuff, yeah. which is cool. It's nothing wrong with that. You know I think Trace Davis has been cool. Pods, really even solid. though he gets a little too much of a long leash, he's been cool too. The problem is Steve Kerr. He's the guy. He's 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 the he's the main nucleus. Yes, we did in fact missed out on our draft picks, but now you have Kaminga coming along. This year, so it's like, what are you going to do with him next year? He kind of doesn't fit next to Steph, so it's kind of a weird dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, Wiggins has kind of fallen off. You know, he's been dealing with his family issues again this year. You know, and then Draymond Green's probably the lone guy who, if you keep him, he maximizes his energy or his value the most with Steph. So There's like, just too much stuff going, around, going on with the team. Yeah. I think the Wiseman missing on that pick is the one, only pick that I really look at and think, yeah. you fucked up. Kaminga could have been Franz. I'm okay Moody with it. could be good if he plays. Kaminga's fucking good. Kaminga's like, fine. You he's, not, he's not Franz. Moody could have been Shagun. Franz, Franz can't shoot. If you have Franz instead of Kaminga, does, does the outlook of this team change? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I think, yeah, I think, I think Franz so. takes them to winning a playoff series? No, I'm saying, oh, no Franz is just much better than Kaminga is what I'm saying. For, can Franz shoot? Again, Franz, Moody could have no, been No, he can't. He's shooting Shen like 29 percent That's the I can't have that. But again, I, I will live with that because Shangun is just well better than Wait, what we are in. Shangun. Moody could have been Shangun. Yeah. That really? Yes. Uh, Shungun was after? Mm -hmm. Shangun was the sixth. But then you drafted, pick. didn't you just draft Trey Sachs and Davis too? Love him. Yeah. That's a great, that's really a great selection. Warrior for life. AirPods, AirPods for the round, for the, for the pick you yeah. have. Moody's not bad. He, they pick. just don't play The Wiseman one was the beginning of the that's, end. That's though. the one. Yeah. I, that was, I'm agreed. Yeah, Lamelo should have been a, a, a Golden State Warrior. He won a title after You're that. right. Tyree said that he wanted to Which is why I feel like the it's fine. That's why I kind of have my difference in opinions That's why I say it's fine because they just won a championship. I know. I don't want to settle this. Exactly. You said with them. Oh, Y'all yeah. are good. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are good. I, listen, me too. I don't want to see the Warriors win anymore, but if I'm a Golden State Warrior fan, I'll try to speak objectively here. I have one of the best players in the world still who's still playing at a very high level. I mean, all he's given to this organization, the least you can do is every single year at least give him a chance. I'm with you, Riv. I, I, how can we look at the Golden State Warriors and the way that Steph Curry's playing and be okay with him sitting at the three-minute mark in the third quarter and not coming back for the six-minute mark. You have to do something in that regard because Steve Kerr has not been good, whether it's uh, handling minutes incorrectly, terrible rotations. It's been like this all season for him. Last year, this was a problem for him too. Uh, I just don't know wh why there's such a stubbornness when 
you saw what can happen when you maximize the talent around Steph Curry. Mm. With 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 one of the most let me not say regular because that's be slighting the Golden State Warriors, but in 2022, we still talk about it. The Celtics were a better unit. They just had the experience, and they had one of the best players, and at the end of that season, the best player in the world in Steph Curry. I just think you need to understand, hey, he still has it. Let's continue to put what we can around him to best maximize our opportunity because after Steph Curry goes, we're screwed. A perfect storm of things happened that season. A perfect storm. Uh, that's not even saying it in a bad way. It's just Andrew Wiggins was this elite level defender and three and D guy legitimately. Clay Thompson came back solid from the injury. Jordan Poole was sixth man of the year when he started, was averaging 25. He looked like a young he was star. Going crazy. Otto Porter, they got a healthy season out of Otto Porter. Otto Porter's That's never healthy. Sense. <laughs> uh, Otto Porter, before that moment, was what you, always what you, hurt. What are you, you saying, bro? No, like. It was a perfect storm. Remember, he Draymond said, he Green said he got, got lucky. Draymond Green got hurt during the year. Mid-season. I'm not saying Steph Curry mm-hmm. got hurt. I'm not during saying the, year. So the Warriors not, got lucky. We were limping going into the playoffs. I'm mouth. just saying there was a perfect storm of every player was awesome for you guys. Yeah, and that's what you need to win. But, I mean, that's what you need for any team to win. But here's, here's the problem. I know. That was why this is why this. But it's like this is a similar team, but Wiggins fell off. It's also two years later, and yeah, way different. Wiggins. Let me tell you why I can debunk that. Remember the next year, who had the best starting lineup? In the league the next year, the Golden State Warriors, who had the worst bench in the league next year, Golden State the Golden State Warriors. They lost almost every single road game that year. That was last, last year. Yep. Every After you come off a title, you just uh, let it also, rot. Also, you had the Draymond situation. Yeah, you, you, you let it rot. That you, was you, tension you, in the locker room. You, you let the team rot. Cool, fine, whatever. Draymond Green situation happens. Okay, fine, cool. But that starting five was still the best in the world. That year, still statistically, when those starting five played, they were still the best in the world. Was the it be- the best for the entirety of the season or for a point? Because I know for no, a it, point it, it was. It was the best in the world. Because Wiggins, after the shoulder injury, <laughs> fell off Oh, yeah, off Wiggins, drastically. probably after that was probably when, because he went out for some time, then he came back, he was still a little muddy. But when they were playing and they were healthy, at minimum, they were like top, they were like bottom six. And they don't, like, you could say it's the same team from two years ago, but that version of Jordan Poole, they have nothing close to that on this roster. We don't yeah. even have a number two on this roster. Exactly. No, they, don't. They, don't they don't have a Bielitsa. Cry. He, played, he locked Tatum up a few times. He was times. good. Don't Bielitsa lie, was good. Tatum was locking himself up. Ah, stop, man. He's I, right. I don't know. Like, I just... You just so what? Like you just gonna keep waddling away at the playing while Steph's just putting up twenty eight. It's just very hard. If I'm to, him. I retire. It, it's just very hard to make a move <laughs> that just takes you from here to all the way here. Well, it's gonna be for it's really any team in the West to get past Denver. I mean, they look like a pretty you know <laughs> a team that no one's gonna have to. Gonna well, be for able starters, to they should past. start by getting the center. That would that would help. help the world. Just to um, bang with him. Just to do, just to bang with Rudy Gobert, bro. We don't have a center to bang with anybody. No. This is this is like the unfortunate truth though of staying loyal to a franchise. Yeah. Like when you stay loyal to a franchise, you're going to go through these downturns. Kobe Bryant went through it with the yeah. Lakers. Uh, yeah. the, the reason why LeBron doesn't go through this is because he leaves all the time. I think the problem, is, the problem with he that is. is Steph is one of the few guys who stay loyal and is still elite at 36. Yeah. That's true. But like, just think about Giannis. Giannis is not going to stay loyal to Milwaukee. And that's Steph's now fucking he problem that. right there. Red Put it up. up. You're right. They, they were the best lineup in basketball last season. I know. Plus 22. You can't, you, I know. We nah, were bro. dominating when we got that starting five in. But then Giannis, the bench came in. But Giannis, he's not going to stay in Milwaukee if their yeah. championship window closes. And if he were to stay loyal, he wouldn't have a chance to win either. It would be very hard for the Bucks mm-hmm. to build a roster around him. I just feel like when you pay players, it's just a cycle of how team building goes. Mm-hmm. There's going to be this period where the players start to decline. The value's not as high. And your young players, maybe they got some value to trade, but it's not enough to get you to where you want to go. This is the offseason, though. Draymond re-signed last year. If Clay walks or takes a, a very reasonable contract, there's you have a chance to make a move. Well, that's on Clay. Clay. That's I on think Clay, Clay got to take a, Clay got to take a team friendly. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it ain't it, no if, if Clay's going to sign for like brother, ten M's. Like, he, I, we brother, can do that. listen, Clay, I will tell him. Like yo, bro, you ain't. You but ain't yeah, if Clay's going twenty twenty five million, million we're like, all right, go to fucking Philly. Like, go, go have to fun. Detroit. You yeah, want to go over there and make twenty five? God bless. But, he got to uh, take yeah, the Russell no. Westbrook Clippers contract. That's what he yeah. got to do. Okay, but they, 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 they don't even have money to really. Everything they're gonna have to do is probably like a sign and trade, anyways. Yeah, like in the off season. So I don't like 
God bless them. You know, I'm going to ride out these Steph years for sure, though, because we're going to have fun regardless because, you know, he's exciting to watch. He's, he's, he is yeah. still amazing. Yeah, he's, he is. We're going we're gonna, to, you know, unless he, if he decides he wants to leave. <laughs> On to the last segment of the show. Going to talk about how sports betting, sports gambling is affecting the sports world today because we, we see it all over. You can't watch an NBA game, NFL, NHL, MLB without seeing Tons of gambling ads, and in the NBA specifically, we just got news that the NBA app, while you're watching games on League Pass, you can just easily slide, and you could bet within the app. JB Bickerstaff talked about on Wednesday last week that he received threatening text messages from disgruntled gamblers who tracked down his number. Eric Spolstra had an incident last year with Victor Oladipo where a gambler was upset because he didn't take a three when the game was over. Tyrese Halliburton came out with a quote saying that to half the world, I'm just helping them make money on DraftKings or whatever. I'm a prop. Ironic we're talking about this because we're sponsored by Prize Picks, a uh, DFS app. But, you know, I, I, I feel kind of torn with this, right? Because mm -hmm. I do think that it's not the worst thing in the world to promote DFS and gambling if you're promoting it in a responsible way. I also think that when it comes to us, uh, we are media. We do a podcast. They're a sponsor. It helps us, you know, pay the things around here. I don't think the NBA and NFL need that money to survive. I think the leagues could be totally fine if they're not getting that influx of income. And at this point, they are promoting it to the point that you cannot go without it. To anybody trying to avoid gambling, you cannot avoid it because I, I think I don't think gambling is a terrible thing. I understand there's a dark side to it, but at the same time, there's a dark side to anything. Sure. You know, alcohol in in a if you are responsible with it, you know, you can have fun with it. You know, there is a dark side to that. Same thing with marijuana, things of that nature. Gambling, I think, is in kind of the same lens. You can be responsible. You hear that? Else? You can be responsible with it. It's in the dark side. <laughs> You can be responsible with it. The problem is that you usually don't expect the companies to promote it at nauseum because with tobacco, with marijuana, with alcohol, they are strict on the amount of ads that it, that amount of times they can be showcased. With sports gambling, it's not that way. You see sports gambling ads during commercials. When you're watching inside the NBA or during an NBA game, there is a cut to Kenny Smith Shit, or Charles true. Barkley, and they're saying, I love me some nuggets minus four. <laughs> you know, you cannot get away from the promotion of sports gambling. And I feel like that is the issue because they are promoting it relentlessly. And on ESPN the other day, Reese Davis, I think he went out and said that, you know, it was a risk-free investment. That was insane. You know, gambling, you know? The way that you just broke it down, it's not so much gambling as much as it is a risk-free investment. And this is the leader of sports. This is ESPN that are feeding people this information. And I wonder what it's going to do to the young sports fan that just wants to watch basketball and it can't get away from these advertisements. And, it, you know, there's a way to gamble responsibly, but there are some people that they can go on a downward spiral and it's because of the influx of advertisements that we see around us watching sports. I think that that was worded very well. I mean, you look at how ad nauseum it's kind of given to us as we're watching a normal sporting event. If you didn't know about sports betting or if you don't know about sports betting, truthfully, you're living under a rock at this point in time. Listen, of course, you mentioned it. Credit to our guys over at Prize Picks. Uh, they do some great, they do great stuff over there. Uh, and I definitely have no actual problem with sports betting and of course any type of app of that re resort but understanding that you are generally responsible the same way that if you have a, a, a liking for alcohol you need to keep it in moderation similar with marijuana yeah. these are two le legal recreational substances but you use them at your discretion there's there's a, a price to pay if you are too much or if you intake too much alcohol, there, there are real consequences to that. Same thing with smoking, whether it's marijuana or cigarettes, where we even see it now with cigarettes, where on the box you buy a package, it says smoking kills. You're right. They limit the amount of advertisement that certain products do get. Alcohol, I feel like that one's in a similar boat with, yes. with gambling, where you get beer commercials, you get liquor commercials. All the time. For sure. But again, it, it is also to the individual's discretion. Now... <laughs> These players go out there and they try the best they can every single night. Uh, the the fact that 
you have certain individuals that take it that step far. Th- that's an issue within themselves. Again, there's always the, the services. You get the 1-800-GAMBLERS. You get those, those types of services that can help you if you do have a problem. But again, I can also understand where these players are coming from. There's people that genuinely take it over the top and start to treat these guys as, as objects and not human beings. Uh, there, there was a history of that before in our country. It's not a great thing. So um, how can we not hear where these guys are coming from and not at least try and do better on our part? Uh, try and treat the basketball game and these players as entertainment, not much more so as a dollar sign. Uh, these guys are, are working hard. They're, they're earning their hard-earned money too. But because you don't like a decision they make, who are you to go out there and, and, and try and belittle them and and treat them something that they're not. They are human beings at the end of the day, like you and I. So, uh, again, there's positives to everything. There's negatives to to almost everything. But be responsible. Don't be a jerk. End of the day, simple. It's impossible, honestly, for the casual fan, the casual sports watcher. The reality is there's going to be dickheads out there, right? Even if they're watching sports gambling before there was social media, there was people calling to radio stations. There was going to be people sending hate mail. There's going to be people at the games yelling at fans. We saw that with Kevin Durant, what, a couple weeks ago, a month ago. So, And then the dude tried to dap him. Like, come on. Because, yeah, you talk shit, and then he comes face to face, and you're like, oh, I'm not going to talk shit anymore. You're fucking seven foot tall. So it's impossible to avoid the kind of negative in terms of, like, people attacking fans or excuse me, people attacking players or coaches for not hitting their overs or their unders or the spread, whatever the case might be. But I think the one area that the leagues have to be really careful of is their own players betting on games. You know, the um, issue we have with Toronto Raptors with Porter right now is there's rumors or questions that he might have bet on the under on his props. And Mm. then he fakes an injury (laughs) and gets placed out of the game. That's a real life issue. Once you have the integrity of the game get put into question, now that's a different conversation we have to have. But for another example, if you're betting like Calvin Ridley and you're betting on a game you have, I don't actually know if he bet on games and have anything to part with it. Maybe not yep. the best example, mm-hmm. but say you're Calvin or Ridley. Just Pete Rose. Pete Rose bet on his team to win. He never bet against himself. He only bet for himself. I think this is where you're going along those lines in terms of if you're doing something like that, and you're betting on yourself, that's completely different than betting against yourself and actively trying to fail to earn profit. Yeah, and what now if it's, I bet on myself like hit a home run. I'm locked in. Right. And you're trying you I don't even love that because yeah. then you're still impacting the way you no, play. Yeah. If I, I'm if I'm taking myself yeah. to over 27 and a half, yeah. I might go out there and take 30 shots on normal. So you I might bet on yourself okay, fair point. Yeah. But fair the point one there. area I'm cool with, if it's a different game, if it's a different sport. Go with it. It's very silly to me. And the NFL has this rule that you can't bet on anything on NFL grounds. You cannot open any of these apps and go and bet on the NBA if you're at the train facility, wherever, where you're on their grounds. That seems ridiculous to me. If I'm an NFL player and I want to go bet on the the Knicks game tonight, I should be able to do that. That feels like they're a little bit too much overwhelming. But when you're betting on anything you have control of, Positively or negatively, again, like you're, if you bet on yourself to do well, specifically in an NBA sense, where if you shoot more, you're more likely to score more points. That's going to have an impact, and it's going to change the integrity of the game too. So, I think there's some aspects that aren't changeable. You're not going to be able to change dickhead fans who are going to talk shit about NBA players. That's been going on since the sport's been created. But stuff like that, where players are, you know, purposely changing how they would play to uh, benefit themselves, is an issue. I do think. <clears throat> that plan is a little cool. I do think, like, say, for example, me and Drew, right, we're best friends, and um, Drew plays for the Raptors, and I play for Chicago. Like, they, they say you can't bet on your own team. If I bet on Drew under, I can easily, if he's my best friend, like, call him, like, yo, I kind of need you to Twist not hit these threes tonight. Like, <laughs> Twist you know? your ankle so I think, court, like, yeah. Them saying, like, you can't bet on your own sport is dope, but you can bet on, like, if you're a basketball player, you bet on NFL hockey. If you're yep. an NFL player, you can bet. Like, I think that's cool. Like, keep it to where... You don't have an outcome. Like you don't have any responsibility for what happens. Like I think you still, even if I do play for Chicago and like Joel plays for the Suns, I can still call him up, feed my boy. Like yo, don't take three threes tonight. Like I, I need that. Like I need that bread tonight. Don't take three threes. Like it's still a op- like a way where you could, you know, get get in there. But I do think people are just like I think people can gamble and I think gambling is okay. You know, I think it's just a part of life in a sense of, especially mm-hmm. now where we're at, it's part of the money making way. You know, we have the casinos, we have stuff like that, blackjack, poker and gambling. Like this is just a part of 
our type of society. You know, and I think the people that do extra stuff, like if you don't get 25 points and I'm DMing you, I'm sending death threats. Brother, man, you should have never put that money down. If you ain't really have it to where you had, like you had extra money, like if you didn't have money and that was your last, that's on you. But I feel like that's where the extremists go is where they go to DMs. They start threatening people's families. You know, those are just, those are just sick people. And that happens even if you don't have gambling. That happens if, right. you know, you hit a, you miss a game winner for your favorite team. Or, you you know, you're having a stretch of 20 games where you're not playing good. Like so that, even without the gambling, you can take the gambling away. That still happens. You know, Westbrook was getting death threats with the Lakers. And he was getting, you know, d- disgusting DMs. Who was it? Two year, Danny, Danny Green. Green. Mm-hmm. He was getting destroyed. And that wasn't even with gambling. So it's like, that's still always going to happen. But in terms of like stuff like Jonte Porter, Calvin Ridley, even Pete Rose, like stuff like that, we can definitely limit that. Jonte Porter is insane for doing that. I'll be on betting the under. And then apparently he was like faking injuries or like apparently just not shooting or something like that. That's insane. I feel like you got to keep it to where, in my opinion, what I would do is I would say you can't bet on your own sport. Like, so if you're an NBA player, you cannot bet on anything NBA. You can bet on college, maybe. You know, you can bet on some NFL for sure, hockey, soccer. If you're a soccer player, you can't bet on soccer. So I would keep it like that. And I think it's becoming aggravating that every time I watch something and it could have nothing really. I was watching Halo 3 all cutscenes yesterday and a FanDuel ad popped up. <laughs> Why on earth is a FanDuel ad popping up for a game from 10 years ago is insane to me. I don't want to see that all the time Mm -hmm. because then it becomes, you start to make it an addiction for other people. You start to make it like you start to aid in the habits of being a, you know, excessive gambler. And that's not what you want to do. You know, I don't think you should even do that for alcohol or you should even do that for cigarettes or weed or stuff like that. You can make it, you know, accessible. That's fine. You know, if people want to indulge in that, that's cool. But I don't think you should keep putting it in people's faces the way they see it. They see it. They're like, all right, let me try this out. Now you got females gambling that don't even watch sports. People, grandmothers hopping in on FanDuel, putting $100 money line. You know, you got certain mothers, aunts, people. Like, it's all types of people because they want to make that that quick dollar. But I do think, you know, it's becoming a little too much that every time I watch something that has nothing related to basketball, y'all keep showing me FanDuel, DraftKings, all this stuff. I don't want to see that all the time. Doesn't, just isn't a, a League Pass going to implement that too? Yes. Haven't they said that? That's like... It is becoming a little dystopian with like you see that in all like different type of like futuristic shows where you have all of these ads popping up of all these different things that I feel like I don't know. There's been a like a pretty bad, pretty big outlash over it. So maybe they don't go through with it, but it just seems wild that I understand we're progressing towards it. But to constantly have it up Taking on my love screen, from the game, man. losing it. Yeah, that's the, the biggest problem I have with it is just the over promotion of it and um, just not enough education on what it is Mm -hmm. because it is being presented as a way to make money. That's how it's it's being presented as a way to increase your money. When I I do think for the most part, most betters, they lose. That's just a 100% fact. That's how these sports books make money. And I think even if you do win, uh, some of these companies, I can't specify which ones, but I was reading somewhere where some of these companies, if, if you are showing that you are a profitable winner, they're going to limit you. They limit you. Yep, for sure. So absolutely. it's not even a way to really make consistent money because if you show you do win, if you are one of the few that can get by the cracks and win consistently, they start to limit you. So it's not even a genuine, authentic way of saying, oh, if you're actually good, you can win. Because no, if you're good, they'll limit you. Mm-hmm. And it's being promoted in a different way. And I, I feel like eventually we'll come to a happy medium where uh, gambling will still be here and it's accessible, but it's not in your face all the time. Like you can turn on an NBA game and you're not bombarded with a, a ton of ads because like I said, like it's nothing wrong with doing it in moderation and there's nothing wrong with it being accessible. It's the fact that you are kind of, you're shoving people into the door of doing it mm-hmm. without like telling them any of the things that they probably should know. Like, Hey, you know, if you start winning, we'll just limit you. And, you know, I feel like the proper education of it is something that should be presented. And uh, it's definitely a, a good case study that we're going to find out about because, you know, you look at the history of things that have happened in the United States, whether it's been tobacco and like doctors used to promote tobacco and they used to call tobacco safe. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and of course, now we know that's a lie. It's I'm curious to see how in 10 to 15 years, this era will look like how many people did the NBA make addictive gamblers by 
the amount of promotion or what do the numbers look like? Because it is something that is going on currently that could be interesting down the line. For sure. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick a Side podcast, episode 366. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Pick a Side Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick a Side Podcast. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time.